Hello, friends. Welcome to the stream. We're finally starting off the stream at 2 p.m., baby. Hello, hello. Apologies for me being late. I completely forgot that the copy that I played, multiplayer of Barcelona, um, was at my friends uh, Kat and Kyle's house, and it was their copy. So theirs was already punched, and I forgot that I had yet to actually punch mine. So yes, I had to take a little bit of extra time to do that. I know that you guys said that I should probably just come on stream and do it with you. So I did leave. We still got to punch all of the, the workers out. So that's good. So you guys can see a little bit of punching. Um, let me know how you are. Hello, hello. Everybody in chat. Anna, hello. Ryan, Nat, Board to Play, Joe, hello. Uh, CJ or CJack, DC. George, hello, hello. How's it going? Hello, Anna. Hi, Nightbot. Be a good bot today. He has been, he's been good. He's been good recently. Nightbot has been good. Um, but yes, I do need to do a few things before we get started with the game. I have a feeling this is going to be a long stream. So, you know, feel free to hang out. Um, I also don't know 100% of the rules. So if you are one of the people that are going to be in the comments saying you shouldn't have played this if you didn't know the rules, well, we are going to learn the rules as we play. I enjoy doing that. I enjoy kind of learning as we go. I already know how to play Barcelona. I just have not read solely through the rule book yet. So there's going to be some things that I'm going to have to check the rule book for. I'm feeling a little sassy today. <laughs> Ugh. It's been quite the weekend, y'all. Woohoo! Good morning, Jenna. Good morning, Nat. How are you? Hi, Jenna. It's 2 a.m. here, though. Oh, no. Davis, I'm so sorry. Meeples over peoples. Hello, hello. How are you doing today? Like I said, Anna, I'm feeling sassy today. I don't know what it is. It's been a weekend. It's been a fun weekend. I went out dancing with my friends on Friday night and then got home yesterday. Um, I had to do a little bit of work. And then now we are here playing Barcelona, which I'm freaking pumped about. Oh, look at all these people coming to say hello. Welcome, everyone. Hello, George. Hopefully you're doing well, George. Don't threaten us with a good time. Ooh, I'm threatening you. Threatening you with a real good time. You're about to upset at least one big dum dum today. <laughs> Jenna, with the toque. I mean, beanie. Uh, the good term is beanie. No, it's a toque. This is a toque. Also, I feel like it kind of got shrunk in the wash. Not sure. Also, guys, look at my sweater. Francis got it for me for my birthday. It is, if you guys don't know who this is, this is Celeste from Animal Crossing. And then it also has like constellations on the arms. And then it also, on the back, has a moon. Look at it, so cute. So cute, I love it. All right, let's get doing some punching. I also need to do a few more things to set up, so we are going to do that. Um, this is a pretty, it's not a, like a super, super heavy Euro, but it is a Euro. So we're gonna do lots of number crunching. Also, I should probably do this like here. Bow, bow. Can you guys hear it? Also, I don't know if you guys can hear Francis, but he's laughing. He's having a good time up there. I think he's watching some sort of, like, comedy D&D &D thing. Celeste from Pokemons? Get out of here. Jenna is a Pokemon nerd now. It is not a Pokemon, George. <laughs> Trying to like make it so you guys can hear it. Bow, bow, bow. I need to get better at doing this. I feel like some people go pow, 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 pow. Oh, 
oh, that's going everywhere. That's not a good idea. This is the better way to do it. Hello, uh, Mazola. Hello, hello. Celeste looked like an apple fairy from a distance. <laughs> an apple fairy. I want to be an apple fairy. Comedy and D&D &D don't go together. It seemed very funny. They were like doing D&D, &D, but then like some of it was uh, like animated. So it would go back and forth between the animation and the people actually sitting there. It was quite funny. And like the bard was singing about some interesting things. Get in the bag, workers. Um, ooh, all good. I just went a bit of a Black Friday slash Cyber Monday shopping spree. Nice. Nice, nice. That sounds like a lot of fun. I am holding off on doing any Black Friday shopping because I kind of want to just wait until I go to PAX next week and see what they have there. I know there probably won't be any, like, deals i feel like there's some deals but a lot of the times with the conversion between canadian and american doesn't really save you too much so cute love that hoodie thank you jenna i insist you refer to the game as barcelona <laughs> like a pretentious brit who just came back from a spanish holiday barcelona Barcelona. <laughs> Why does that sound so funny? <laughs> I feel like I half sound fancy Brit and half sound like I just have a lisp. Barcelona. <laughs> okay. I am going to zoom you guys in. Can I zoom you in? Have I set up some? Here we go. Cause we're gonna put some, we're gonna put some stickers on these little trains. Okay. We'll get to the game eventually, guys. We'll do it. We're just hanging out today. That's what I've decided. I guess I should probably show you guys me trying to put this freaking sticker on. Oh, this is not gonna go well. This is not going to go well at all. These have to be very, very particular in their placement. Holy. What in the frickin' my, what in the heckity heck? I almost said what in my frickity dick. Probably shouldn't say that. Stickers on trains. Choo-choo. Choo-choo. Okay. There's one. Other side. I don't really know why I'm doing this one because this is for a color that I'm not playing. That's fine. This is not going well. This is not going well at all. Also, I feel like I'm not really on camera anymore. Here we go. Is that better? I feel like my camera's a little off center. I feel like I'm like over here. I think I need to move my camera slightly. Is that better? That's probably better. So there we go. Trolleys. Finally, I could catch a stream, uh, but it's 8 p.m. here. Um, I will need to replay. Well, I'm happy you were able to catch a little bit of the stream. Mazzola, welcome to the stream. Why am I injured? Oh, oh, is it my, my little thumb? I burnt my hand on a curling iron when I was doing my hair on Friday. <laughs> it's fine, I'm fine. Everything's fine. Oh 
my lord. This is so hard. There's like this one little piece of the train that you really have to get into like a perfect placement or it's going to not be good. <laughs> Drives me bonkers. I knew it had to do with the Friday activities. Hey, hey. Uh, it was such a fun night. If you guys do not know, my friends and I went uh, dancing on Friday. It was very fun. Okay, I think these are all the exact same. Um, I think I'm going to pass on putting the blue one on for now. And then I'll just focus on the two colors that I am playing. Um, which I am going to be playing against an AI player, obviously, as a solo mode. Um, there is a solo AI and you're pretty much just playing it as a two player game. Um, but then the solo AI has some like cards that you're going to be flipping and then determining what actions they're going to be taking. They also have like a little meeple on the board as well. If you guys can see that. Also, I lost a nail. Can you guys see? Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> board gamers go out and do other things yeah I guess like I do slightly most of the time it's it's I go out for board games but I do have another like friend group that I'm really really thankful for that kind of allows me to take a break from board games and do something slightly different which I feel like is good um, so I don't burn myself out of board games, but obviously board games be my number one. Okay, so that's my little trolley. And then we have the AI's trolley, which I actually don't think the AI uses their trolley, but I'm still going to put the sticker on. I don't even know if you guys can see me be putting this on, but... I'm concentrating very much on putting this sticker on. Is it just the Brits though? I know there's a regional Spanish accent that pronounces Zs as TH. I did a Spanish class in uh, Cadiz, Cadiz, and they pronounced it Cadiz. Oh, interesting. Hello, Terry. Welcome to the stream. I've never heard that before and it sounds uh, hilarious. Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. George the babe. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, Jenna, I need you to do my hair for packs so I can booth babe better. <laughs> Everyone's everyone wants a teddy bear with a beard <laughs> and fabulous hair. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so George, are you working at the Lucky Duck booth? Is that what you are doing? You want me to curl your hair, George? I'll curl your hair if you want. Okay, I think we're good. Oopsie. So we got the trolley. So there's the AIs, and then I will do the blue one later. Um, I do actually need to put, let me zoom you guys out again so we can put down. Uh, yes, I'm going to be at the Lucky Duck booth. So is, oh nice, Ryan is too, that's awesome. Okay, so I do need to place some of these workers down. Um, wherever, I don't know if you guys can see, but wherever there is a two-player little icon on these paths here. Um, oopsie. That's going to be where a worker is already going to be placed. I'm going to be calling these workers, but they are, I believe, like builders. I'm going to put one there. And whenever one of these paths hits the end, that's going to be the end of the game. So 
it kind of depends on how quickly one color gets pulled out of the bag because each of our turns we are going to be pulling two out of the bag and then going to be placing them on the board so it's interesting because the game could go really quickly if you ended up pulling out a lot of one color i think that's actually what happened to um, the brothers murph when they played this one of the tracks went up pretty quickly jenna what are you buying francis for xmas what's on his wish list um honestly for christmas we don't really do gifts for each other um, most of the time we try to just like save up a little bit of money to maybe like go traveling somewhere eventually um, so we don't really do Christmas gifts we typically just do birthday gifts which like I said he got me this sweater which was very nice um, but yeah Christmas is usually like a let's save the money on buying each other stuff and go traveling somewhere so I think we might be saving some money up and maybe possibly going to Japan next year which will be fun um, Japan or maybe somewhere in Europe we will see okay so I have all the workers out here I have he's in the center here um, I do have to put out all of my things on my board so let me zoom you guys into my board here so my little tram is gonna start here we have all these cubes that are going to start on these spots like so these are going to be passengers that I actu actually can like drop off at different places on the board um, and then you also have these personal objectives here which with some specific actions you can actually upgrade the objective so whatever objective tile is here you can have it either times one or you can double whatever the objective is um, by upgrading the objective. I'm gonna put all those here. Also have, is it the bigger circle or is it the smaller circle? I think it might be this one that goes up here. And we have these go along here. kind of forget what these are for. Where do I put these? Um, oh yeah, one goes, let me zoom you guys out again. One goes here. Or is it the smaller one? Yeah, it's going to be the smaller one. Um, one is going to be for victory points and I have three remaining which actually I do think I think maybe I stack these onto some of these um, let me quickly check see uh, yes the first three get stacked So this gets double stacked, this gets double stacked, and this gets double stacked, like that. Uh, all, Jenna, all Francis wants for Exus is Jenna. Aww, so nice. Ooh, Japan. Yes. Yes, Nat. Our dream has been to travel to Japan together since like 2019, 2020. We are actually like seriously planning out a trip to Japan in 2020 and then we all know what happened then so didn't quite work out for us and we've been trying to do it ever since but it just hasn't panned out. All right and then I do need to put down all of these.
Is there anyone in chat that has played Barcelona before? Let me know your thoughts. One, two, three, four, five, six, go here. Four, go here. And then I believe I start with one cloth and one coin. Okay. All right. Organizing my underwater cities into an insert. So happy. Oh, Francis and I need to play underwater cities again. That's such a good game. Okay. I'm actually going to move this over here so I can more easily just do it in front of me. There we go. Our uh, our heater finally turned off, so hopefully you guys can hear me better. I can hear myself better, which is nice. Our heater is so freaking loud. I get so distracted by it. Okay. And then I need to put cubes. And the AI never has to actually pay for anything. So that's nice. I really enjoy when, um, <gasps> I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> no! Oh, that's the worst. I'm gonna watch this as it goes, as it happens. <laughs> oh, that's so unfortunate. I pre-ordered Let's Go to Japan. Uh, that's about to, uh, about as close as I'm gonna get. I think of the roses, though. Save the roses. Oh. God dang it. Ugh. This is so frustrating. Okay. I'm going to have to just lean over and do it. Apologies, friends. Give me one second. I'm gonna set up his freaking thing and then we can get started. I think I lost a cube. There should be one more cube. Here, one goes here. Got his little tram. That. Okay. Big roads. One, two, three, four, five, six little roads. Four little roads. Hubby just came out of his office with a huge pile of boxes that are all for me? Hold up. For Christmas? Are those all Christmas gifts, you mean? Is 
They're all Christmas gifts. I'm jealous. All right. Have everything good to go. Okay. He starts here. We have all of the tiles and stuff. I have those. I think I am good to go. Turn structure. I've got that. Um, I do think. I need to randomly pick one of each of these out. I don't know if you guys will be able to see these, but these are the like Sagrada tiles. Um, this is, like I said, a very Euro game. So there's going to be a ton of different things that you can do throughout the game and tons of different ways to score points. I will say when I played this multiplayer, I did win. And I think I scored over 300 points. So I think that's going to be my goal for today as well is to try to score 300 points. We will see. Jenna, do you have any inside details on moon rollers? I have no information on moon rollers. No information at all. I would love to know more. I would definitely ask, I think Alex probably will know more about it than I do. Okay, so I am going to quickly kind of go over a brief overview of how the game plays. If you guys have never played Barcelona before, if you've never looked into it before, um, basically you are going to be on your turn. Let me grab this bag here. You're going to be on your turn drafting or pulling two of the builders out of the bag. So they are going to be colors pink, blue, and green. And what you're going to do is you're going to be stacking these one on top of the other, um, whatever way you want. He won't spill the beans. Well, I wish I had more information, but sadly I do not. I have not heard anything about it actually. Um, but yes, you can either put the blue on top or the pink on top, whatever order you want it to be in. And then you're going to be placing it on one of these intersections. And that is going to determine what two actions you can do on your turn, or you're going to be doing both of them. You don't have to choose between the two. So for example, if I placed this one right here with the pink one um, first on top, doesn't really matter right now, but it will be for when there's more out. Um, because once you have taken your two actions and there is a spot to build a building, um, you will be allowed to do that or you actually have to do that if you are able. Um, so if I place this here, I would then be able to do this action, which is getting one of these houses over here. You do have to pay for them and they are um, more expensive, but they get you more and then it goes down from there as people take them, um, but you'd have, be able to do this action and then this action over here, which is upgrading one of your personal objectives on your board. Um, so yes, those are some actions. There's going to be actions up at the top and actions over on the side here. Um, and you're just basically doing the two actions of the intersection that you're placing your builders on. Once you then have finished those two intersection um, actions, you will then be able to have the opportunity to build so, for example, if this was there, and then on my next turn, I place these two, let's just say I placed it with the blue on top here. If I was to place them on one of these three, so one of the four surrounding this middle area here, oopsie. So if I placed, let me say I went here, 
That would mean that I could either build on this spot here because these two are on one of the four corners for this one and also for this one. So I could choose where I wanted to build and then you're going to be building these buildings up here. So this is the most expensive building where you do need three builders in order to do it. So you'd have to have another one on one of the four corners surrounding a spot. Um, you have this one here, which is two. So I could actually on my turn decide to build this one because you do need one pink and one of any color. So I could actually take this pink one here and this blue one here. And then obviously because it's attached to both of these, I could place it on either of these. I would gain one movement on the uh, Sagrada track. I believe that's what it's called. And then I'd also go down once on this track over here, which this track is going to be a multiplier for some round objectives. So at the end of each of these three rounds, um, so whenever someone has placed a worker here, we will score for this objective, then we'll score for this objective, and then we'll score for this objective, and then the game will end. Um, but at the end of a round, you will score this objective times wherever you are on this track here. So if I manage to get my thing all the way up to the top, I would be able to get two victory points per objective that I had on my personal board times four. So I could actually, if I had, let's say three objectives on my board, that would be two times three, so six times four. So I'd actually get 24 victory points. Um, so the higher on this track you are, the bigger the multiplier. But there are going to be things that put you down on that track. There's going to be things that put you up on that track, so on and so forth. Once I had built this, I would flip it over. I would take one of my circular tokens and I would place it right on top of that building, denoting that I own that building. Um, I would then take the two workers that I used, two or three workers, and I would actually place them on the track. So I'd place the pink one on the next spot of that track and I'd place the blue one here. And then once you are finished building, you actually get victory points based off of the lowest number showing here. So because there is still a one showing on the green track, I would gain one victory point for building that building there. And then that would be my turn. And then it would go to the AI and then we'd go back and forth like so. Let me back up a little bit. I will explain like the different actions as I kind of do them. Uh, but that's the basis of the game is you are going to be taking two builders. You're going to be doing the two actions of the intersection that you go to. And then you are going to build if you can. You do have to build if there is a spot that is going to allow you to build. Okay. Um, I do believe I need to determine who goes first. So let me quickly check if it is different for the solo mode. Do, do, do. Uh, give yourself the first player token. So I am going to be the first player for the first round. And then for the, I believe his name is Gaudi. Gaudi is the AI. So I'm going to be playing against Gaudi. And they are not going to gain any resources. So there's two resources in the game. There's cloth and coin. And whenever they gain either cloth or coin, they are going to gain GR, which I think that is Gaudi reward. I think it's Gaudi's reward is what GR means. Um, but basically your GR is going to be determined by the difficulty. So GR, um, you would either get two victory points per GR, um, so that would be the easy mode. You would get three victory points per GR um, in a normal, and then four victory points per GR if you're doing hard. Um, so whenever they gain a GR, they're going to gain two victory points in this situation because I'm obviously doing the easiest mode possible. We will see how I do. Um, I feel like I will do decent, but we will see. Um, yeah, so basically on Gaudi's turn, they are going to be flipping over one of their cards, and then that's going to determine the actions that they're going to be doing, and then they are going to move their little meeple to a spot. Um, wherever they move their meeple to, that does not have anything to do with what actions they're going to do. 
they will move one single spot, um, but then they will do the action on the card. Oh yeah, and then they also do place the, the builders as well because um, they will have the option to build as well. Okay, I feel like this is pretty straightforward. If I have any questions, I think they do a really good job. Uh, this is actually the solo rule book here. Um, they've actually done a really good job with putting like the different sections and all of the different like subtitles so you can find things really easily. Um, so like when they build and when they put in an intersection and when they, oh shit, I mean poop. <laughs> when they put in uh, one of their modern, modern is me? Modern, modern is me. I don't know how to say that project. Basically the, the uh, personal objective tiles. All right. Yes, all Xmas gifts. Oh, Kim, so excited for you. That's so fun. All right. So I think we're ready to go. I am going to be the first player. So I am going to draw two workers out of the bag. Let's see what we get. Oh, we got two greens. All right. And I do want to point out the three different actions that we are going to be working towards um, or three different uh, round objectives that we're going to be working towards. So the first one is going to be objective tiles on my board. I'm going to get two victory points per objective tile on my board times whatever I am on that track there. So I think I'm going to try to do that. So that is this action here. So I can place my workers in this row here. I'm going to try to place my workers there. Um, hmm. I could go here and that would allow me to gain an objective. And then also I could upgrade one right away as well. I could go down in this corner and I could get two movement up on here so I could already be at times two for the objective. Um, I could go here and build two roads, which building roads is just taking one of the road pieces and then putting it into one of these things here. You will gain victory points for that as well. Um, I could gain two coins or I could gain a cloth and three victory points. Um... Hmm. I think I am going to go here. Maybe not. Maybe I'll go here and I'll build some roads. If I build some roads, I'll be able to get some like victory points and stuff. And I can kind of explain the roads to you guys. So I'm going to place my builders here. So I'm going to be able to gain an objective tile. And I will also be able to put out two roads. And I think I actually might kind of connect the two. Because over here, I don't know if you guys can see. But there are a bunch of different objective tiles face up here. And then there's a pile here. And these are the ones that I can choose from. I believe you can also take the one off the top of the pile here. But uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take... This one here, which is one victory point per road, because I am already building two roads there. A new one is going to get flipped over. I do think you can just flip it over into the new spot, but I'll push it down. Um, so I'm going to put this one here. So it will be free. So that is for that action. And then I'm going to be able to build two roads. So. When we build roads, they're going to be placed, there's either the skinny roads or there is the bigger roads. So you guys can see that the bigger roads are gonna be in these spots as well as these spots. Um, and then they have like the diagonal here as well. And then these skinny ones are going to be in all of the other, oh my goodness. I'm not used to having long fingernails. 
Um, so you're going to be able to build them anywhere. You can just start anywhere. <laughs> Our tree has so much stuff underneath and we said we weren't going to get much this year. So much for that. Aw. Uh, you would think there's uh, two to three kids living with us, not a grown adult couple. I love that, though. That's so fun. Um, okay, so whenever you place down a road, if you place it on top of something, you do gain that thing. So for me here, I'm going to place it here. So that's going to get me one cloth. And I can place that here. You guys can see... Oh, zoom me out again. Um, if you guys can see on my board here, you only have a certain amount of uh, storage unless you start taking these off and placing them over here onto this board here. Um, so if I do want to gain more storage, I'm going to have to uh, take off some of those little cobblestone tiles. Um, I do gain one victory point for placing that one there. So I gain one victory point. And then I'm also additionally going to put this one here. And this one, because it is attached to this one, as you build off of one of them, the more victory points you're going to get for them. So this one I placed down and got one. This one I'm going to place down and I gain two. So one, two. And then whoever decides to actually place one here, that will be three victory points and then four victory points for this one. So uh, straight lines or connected lines, you'll be able to gain more and more victory points as you put them down. Giving gifts is my love language though. I buy all year round for people. I love that. I feel like gift giving is definitely becoming more and more of one of my love languages. I definitely think, uh, what is it called? Uh, quality time is probably my number one. I love just spending time with people. That's definitely my number one love language. But then also uh, I like to receive words of affirmation. Um, I like when people, you know, tell me things. It just makes me feel better about myself. Anyways, <laughs> so that is going to be my turn. Obviously right now, because there's only one stack of workers or builders right now, I'm not going to be able to build a building, but that is going to be everything for my turn. Place down my two workers and then I did the two actions. So moving on to the AI's turn, we are going to I actually do believe you're supposed to flip this over first. So we're going to do that. Oh, so they're actually going to be doing pretty much the same thing as I am. Let me quickly just make sure for the first turn of the AI that I'm doing it correctly. So for their turn, your turns are played normally. Uh, Gaudi's Meeple does not affect your turn. When it is Gotti's turn, follow these steps. So draw and flip the top card of the Gotti deck, which we just did. Place it face up right uh, to the right of the Gotti deck on top or forming the discard pile. Move Gotti's Meeple to a new empty uh, street crossing. Um, so we do have to figure out the priorities of how they want to do that. So um, if he has an intersection tile, which is one of these, so if there was an intersection tile, Gotti will always move to one of their intersection tiles because they do gain um, rewards for that, for people going onto their intersection tiles. Hi friends, sorry, uh, sorry that I'm late. Srebmi, Carmen, you are not late at all. I am literally just starting the game. I am very, very behind today. So you actually showed up pretty, pretty good timing. Words of affirmation, you say, Jenna, you make awesome content. The community you created has a fantastic vibe and you are a wonderful human. Thank you, George. I'm going to cry. I'm too emotional for this shit this weekend. Okay. So intersection. If there's no intersection, then they will then, uh, Gaudi will be able to construct a building at the end of their turn. So they are going to want to move somewhere that they are going to hold up. Move Gotti's Meeple to a new empty street crossing. Draw the stack of two citizens from the bag, placing them on the street crossing where Gotti's Meeple is. 
Okay, so he is going to want to move somewhere where he is going to be able to build a building, which I do believe that's going to be here because if he places builders here, these two will be adjacent to this spot here and that's going to allow him to uh, place there. So we are going to draw two builders. <laughs> Break Jenna counter 0 0.5. <laughs> okay, so they are going to have these two. They have a green and a pink. George, thanks for the reminder that we had a stream today. You always have my back. Yeah, George is so wonderful. And surprisingly buff. <laughs> Me? I'm buff? I love giving gifts. It's my best. Uh, my love language is quality time, mainly while playing board games. Yep. Yep, for sure. I also just love, I don't know what it is about just like being in the same room as someone while you're doing something else. I just love that. Um, I also do love my own like alone time, but I do really love just spending quality time with someone, even if it's not even like talking to people. It's just being in the same room as people. I really like that. <laughs> Jenna, that is slander. I am not wonderful. You are wonderful. Uh, come on. Okay, so then the priority for how they want to layer these is green will always be below pink and pink will always be below blue. So they're going to stack it pink, then blue, then green, sorry. And then they are going to be placing here. Again, they do not do the two actions of these. If they did, they would be gaining one of these buildings and then they would also be upgrading one of their personal objectives on their board, but they do not do those two actions. They are going to be doing the action on their card. So they are going to be taking one of the personal objectives. Um, but before that, so I think that's what we do. Also, if there wasn't any spot that they could move to that they could create a building, um, they would just go to a um, street crossing that did not have another player's intersection. And if there's still a tie between more than one street crossing, you use the arrow. So there's going to be an arrow on the back of this card that you're going to go to that one and then go clockwise um, until you find a spot that they can go to. Okay, perform the action shown on the card that was just flipped, top of the discard pile, instead of the actions available on the street crossing, and then you construct a building, and then that's that. So let's see what they do for this action. I'm pretty sure they just take, um, depending on this arrow here, so, Gotti selects one of the four modernism, I think it's modernism tiles, available according to the top card of the Gotti deck. Take that tile and place it on the rightmost empty space on the Gotti board, replenishing the tile taken on the sideboard as usual. Note that the arrow below uh, this action reminds you of his priority placement. Okay. Oh, yes. So... Because this arrow is pointing to this card, he is going to be taking this one here. And then we are going to be placing this on the rightmost spot on his board. So that's going to go there. And then we will just replenish like so. So that's that. Um, kids are napping. I'm trying to find the energy to build a gingerbread house so we can decorate it tonight. Aw, do it, Srebmi. me. Honestly, building gingerbread houses are a little bit frustrating, so I, I get you. <laughs> I love board to play. I love hosting, although my friends laugh when we play the board games that I'm like, I don't like, I don't like take that. And then I attack everyone first. That's me. That is 100% me. I laugh maniacally about it, and I will never hear the end of it. That's so funny. <laughs> okay, so, oopsie. So once the AI has done their thing there, we are going to build. They will, they will all, oh my goodness, English. English is hard. 
they will always build the best building possible. So they have a pink and a green, which means they can do this one. They can't do the blue because they need three. So they are going to be able to discard the pink and the green, and they are going to do this. So whenever there is a minus one on this track on the side here, they do not go down on this track at all. So we ignore that, but they do go up here. And whenever they do pass one of these buildings, we're gonna flip it over. They gain five victory points for that. So we'll put that there. And then we're gonna place these. Boop and boop. They're going to gain victory points based off of the lowest number. So they're gonna gain another two victory points. This will get flipped over. They will put one of their little tiles there and because this is the first building built in this row they're actually going to flip over this and they're going to gain an additional five so one two three four five place that there they had a pretty good turn not gonna lie not good at all okay So I think that's everything for their turn. They moved their meeple, they placed the builders, they did their action on their card, and then they built that building there. So it is back to me, which I do have to pull out two workers. We have two green. Lovely. Okay. So I do think that I want to build for sure obviously I can only do green so the only building that I'm going to be able to get is this one here which is like the the lowest one but I think that's fine um, so I am going to go if I go here that will allow me to build here that will also allow me to then place two more roads, which would be good. And then I would also be able to get one of these buildings. Do I have enough coins for that? I do not. I only have one coin. So... That would not be a good spot for me to go. I could go here... Ooh, that might actually be good. Let me do that. Because this would still allow me to build on this spot. Only thing with that is that this has already been flipped over, so I wouldn't gain five victory points. Um, dang. Yeah, because all of these are going to cost me three coins. And I currently only have one coin. So, I could gain another objective if I wanted I could like go here yeah, maybe I'll do that I'm gonna go here in this corner here which that's going to allow me to do this action here as well as this action here and then I will have to build on this spot here because of these two workers so I'm gonna gain two on this track on the side which is great and then I'm going to be able to take one I think I'm going to take this one. This objective tile is connected roads. So if I can continue to uh, get all four of these here, um, that will be a lot of victory points for me. So I'm going to grab this one. I am actually going to place it here, but that's going to cost me. Ooh, maybe. I think I might actually place it here. Because I don't think you have to place them in any sort of order if you can afford it. So I am going to spend one cloth to place that there. Discard that. And then, like I said, I do have to build here. So we're going to discard two greens. I'm going to place these here. And then I'm going to take this one here. This building just requires two of any. And then I also, ooh, I also get to go up one more on this track. We're gonna flip this over. 
And then we are gonna put one of my discs down. And then the lowest number here is still two because we haven't had any blues come out. So sadly, I am gonna get only two victory points, but I am the first person to build in this row. So this gets flipped over and I gain another five victory points. So I'm at 10. And I think that is everything for my turn. So go back to the AI. What are you guys all talking about here? <laughs> I should make it one of those big body plushies. What big body plushie are you making? George is the only person Devin has done an overnight chair stream for. The love is real. Oh, <laughs> all right. Ooh, okay. So we now have a blue come out. So the AI is going to obviously put the blue on top of the pink. They always prioritize the blue and they are going to first flip over the next card. Interesting. Okay. So they are going to be taking one of these buildings here in a second. But before we do that, we are going to move their meeple. And they are going to want to move their meeple somewhere that they are going to be able to build a building. So they are most likely going to just build the weakest building. Um, they are going to move somewhere that they can build. But honestly, I think if they moved here, they could build. If they moved here, they could build. If they moved here, they could build. So they can pretty much go in any, any direction aside from up. Um, but do they prioritize... So it's either if they have their own intersection, which they don't, they will then move uh, to be able to construct a building at the end of their turn, or the street crossing does not have any intersection tile. So all of those things are present, but there's still a tie. So what we are going to do is we are going to look at the arrow and it is pointing this way. So I think they are automatically going to move their meeple here. And then they're going to place in the middle like that. What's the recap here? <laughs> Just planning to give George his plush cat. <laughs> That's the recap, Jenna. Okay. Jenna, Brian says hello and he is sad that he is missing stream because he is at the or an airport today. All good. It's all good, Brian. What is Brian's username on on YouTube? Not enough room for two adults sleeping on that sofa. <laughs> Kim and I are hubby and I both fell asleep on the couch yesterday watching Scott Pilgrim animated on Netflix and we both screwed up our necks today. Oh, my neck has been sore for weeks. Francis is also in a lot of pain because he messed up his back at the climbing gym, so he's resting upstairs. Okay, his username's Tanix. Does he not normally do a lot of like chatting? Cause I don't recognize that name. All right. So the AI is now going to do this ability here, which let's quickly check what that is. It's right here. So Gotti takes a tile from the public service, which are all of these buildings here. Um, he has not yet built. Choose the most expensive tile going from left to right. Then Gotti advances on the Serda track and receives victory points as usual, but instead of performing the action on the public service tile, deal the new card from the Gotti deck to the discard pile and perform the action on that card instead. Okay, so moving from left to right, so obviously they are just going to gain this one here, they do not have to pay for it. Typically, you'd have to pay three victory points, um, but they are going to move up twice on the Serity track, and then they are going to gain 10 freaking victory points. So they're going to be at 22 
victory points. And then instead of doing this action here, um, we are going to place this over by their board. We're going to flip over the next card, and that is the action that they're going to take, which this is the tram action, and it's actually the most complicated of the actions that I have not explained yet. So you guys might be able to see that there's also this action here. You additionally get to take this action if you take any of the diagonal here. So if I placed here, I would do this action and this action, but I would also do the diagonal action, which is the tram action. And this is when you do it the first time, you get to place your tram onto any spot of the board. And then after that, when you take the tram action, you get to move your tram and then you also get to drop off passengers um, that, like I said, you have here. You do have to pay to drop off those passengers. They do get more expensive as you drop off more and more passengers. Um, Hello, beautiful people. Hello, Mimi. Welcome to the stream. Mimi, is your actual name Sam? If so, hello. Welcome. Katanix. Tanix Brian is his username. Oh, okay, cool. Ooh, the new Scott Pilg Pilgrim show is so good. I need to check that out. Okay, sounds good. Jenna, do you think this game compares to Coimbra? Are they similar? Ooh, that's a good question, Mimi. Because I actually just recently played Coimbra as well this month, and I really enjoyed Coimbra. Um, I would say that it has a similar look and feel to it. Um, it, it has that general, like, there's a lot of paths kind of thing that goes on with Euro games. Um, but Coimbra, you're doing something completely different where you are using dice. Um, the gameplay is completely different, but it does have that same, you know, multiple paths you can take, um, kind of Euro feel, but I don't really think they feel similar at all. Um, in Coimbra, you are... Um, like obviously like drafting the dice and then depending on the color die that you take and the number, you get to draft the cards um, and then the cards are going to allow you to go up on tracks and stuff like that. It, it is very different than this. This one has a ton of stuff going on. I don't think Coimbra has as much going on as this one. Um, I think Coimbra is not as heavy as this one. But again, they just, they have that similar kind of point salad kind of feel to them so typical in euro games for sure um also i need to flip this over all right so we need to do the tram action for the ai which Gotti places his next passenger from the board on a street space adjacent to his meeple with no other passengers prioritizing prioritizing his own streets that would gain him the most points and avoiding your streets if possible, um, and avoiding your streets if possible. Uh, if he has more than one equal option available, use the arrow on the top card um, and then going clockwise. If there is no available street adjacent to his meeple, check the streets two spaces away. Uh, place his passenger on the chosen street. If he builds on one of your streets, score the street as usual. But instead of performing the action on the street, deal a new card from the gaudy deck and then discard on the discard pile and perform that action. G bus. Okay. So he is going to be placing on one of these streets um, adjacent to here. So I believe that he's going to be placing a passenger on one of these streets. And then he's going to be again flipping over one of these and then doing that action. So typically when a player would place a passenger out. Um, so for example, if I took the tram, I would then place my tram on one of these streets and on future turns i can actually move a certain amount my tram and then i can drop off passengers when you do drop off a passenger you do spend whatever it is here so for the first one i would have to spend one coin and i would drop off a passenger on this street here and then i would be able to do 
whatever the action is that I dropped off that passenger on, so whatever street. So if I dropped it off here, I'd be able to do this action. If I dropped it off here, I'd be able to do this action. So it's whatever street you drop off your passenger on, you do that action. Um, but for the AI, they are just going to drop off one of theirs and they would, if they had any of these as their street, they would drop it off on that street because you gain some victory points for it. But as for this situation, I also don't have any streets here, so they're just going to do it by the arrow. So actually, they're gonna go here. Then I'll drop off their passenger on that spot there. Uh, no, I don't think that's possible. I think you have to do it on these streets because then they're just going to do, they're just gonna do the, the tram action again. So I'm gonna just say it's this one here. So they're going to place it starting this way and going clockwise, they'll place their passenger here and that's going to allow them to flip over this and that's going to allow them to do this action here. Oh boy, okay. Uh, hi, I'm unfamiliar with this game, but I hope you are having fun. How are you? Vicky, hello, welcome to the stream. I'm doing good. This game is called Barcelona, and it is a pretty new release by Born and Dice. Um, and I've played it multiplayer before and really enjoyed it. It actually like very much surprised me. Um, but yeah, I'm playing it solo now and I'm enjoying it so far. Um, it is a pretty big Euro game, so I have a feeling I'm gonna be on for quite a few more hours, but hopefully you guys are enjoying yourselves. Um, hopefully you're doing well, Vicky. Uh, it looks good though, love the colors. Yeah, the colors are gorgeous on this game, for sure. There's quite a lot going on, which I love. Okay, so with this action here, they are simply going to place two roads and then they're also going to upgrade one of their objectives. So depending on the card's icon, Gotti builds either one wide street or two narrow streets adjacent to his meeple, prioritizing spaces with benefits. So he is going to... See, the thing is, he is going to want to do too thin. If he must choose between several options, use the arrow on the top card of the Gotti deck, point of the space, um, to select one of them. If he's... If he could not build a required street adjacent, I'm assuming I have to just go one out, check the streets two spaces away, then street three spaces away, and so on. Uh, just like you, Gotti gains victory points from building the streets, as well as any achievements on the uh, Serda track, both from the street spaces and from emptying a street track. Okay, so he is going to I believe be going on this outer area here because there's no possible spots for him to do narrow streets around him because they're all the uh, wide streets. So what we are going to do is he's going to prioritize coins. But I don't, I don't know how he's going to do this. So I think what he's going to want to do, based off of the arrow, is he's going to want to go clockwise from here. So he's probably going to build this street and this street. I'm just going to go with that. I'm not going to be too particular over what the technicalities are for this. Because um, I don't know if maybe he'll want to go here. Because technically I've already done two here. And if he goes here, then he'll get three victory points. And then this will be... Technically nothing, but I don't think he'll go down to here. I don't know. So I'm just going to go here. He is going to gain one coin, which whenever he gains a coin, that is one GR, which means he's going to gain one, two victory points for that. Um, and then also because he's placing down one, he'll gain one victory point. And then because he's placing down this, he'll gain two, one, two. Okay. So that is his... Uh, double narrow street and then he's also going to upgrade 
which when he gets objectives, he goes from right to left, but when he upgrades objective, he goes from left to right. So he is just going to upgrade this one here, like so. All right. I believe that is everything for that, but I do think that he is going to build. So he is going to build with this and this, and he is going to try to build the best building he can, which is going to be blue and green. And he is going to build here. So blue and green, he has no pink, so he can't build this one, but he's going to build this one here. He's going to go up once on the Cerda track. Then he's going to flip this over. He's going to put one again on here. That's going to get him because he's, he's uh, uncovered this. He's going to go up one more time on the Cerda track. This is going to go here. This is going to go here. And that actually means that the next round is going to be triggered or the end of this round is going to be triggered. So he is going to gain two victory points for doing that building. Because he's already built in this row, he's not going to gain any bonus for that. So I believe that is everything for his turn. And whenever someone does trigger, so whenever this is placed, the round ends immediately. So I actually don't get uh, another turn. We are just going to go straight into scoring for this round, and then we will do uh, some additional things here. So I don't even have the opportunity to try to get up once more. Dang. That's unfortunate. Okay, so because we've made it to the end, we are going to score for this here. So we are going to gain two victory points per um, objective tile that we have on our board times whatever we are on this track. So they are going to, they have one, so they're going to gain two, two victory points times three. So they're going to gain six victory points. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I am going to gain four because I have two, so I have two, four times two. So I have four times two, I get eight victory points. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like so. And I believe that is everything. So we're gonna flip this over. So we're finished for that. We are going to discard these. So this is kind of just like a cleanup phase, I guess. We're gonna discard these four. Four new ones are going to come out. Like so. And then our spots on the Cerda track actually get reset. So we're both going to go back down to there. And then we're going to move to the next round. And I believe it just continues like that. Uh, so I actually, it's my turn now because I didn't get... Or guess because I am the first player. Um, let me quickly check if there is any other kind of cleanup that I am not remembering. Um, whenever a citizen track becomes full, place any extra citizens of that type on the next section. Uh, the final section. Yep, 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 yep. So just scoring as players construct buildings at the end of any player's turn if at least one section of the citizen tracks has been filled or are to or beyond the marked uh Serta scoring space all players score that section's face up Serta scoring tile mm -hmm, mm -hmm. after all players have scored the current score Serta scoring tile flip this tile face down uh, the citizen or the section can no longer be scored again. Um, is that it? Reset the discs of all players on the Serta track. Um, yeah, and then we discard. Okay. I think we're good. I think those are just the only two things that you do. All right, moving on to the next round. So this is the next thing that we're going to be scoring for, which is the little cobblestone things here. 
Hello everyone, dropping in for a while to see what Jenna is up to. Interesting looking game. This could end up uh, costing me money. Hello, Kevin. Welcome to the stream. How are you? This is Barcelona, which is from Board and Dice. It's, I think, one of their newer titles. They have this one and they also have Nucleum, which I really do want to try out Nucle Nucleum at uh, PAX. So if anyone's going to PAX and wants to play Nucleum with me, let me know. I would love to play. If anyone knows how to play it already, that'd be great. Hello, Tasha. Welcome to the stream. How's it going? Okay, so moving on to my turn. Let's see what I can do here. I wonder if I reshuffle the AI's cards. Let me quickly check. Blah, blah, blah. I don't think I do. I think you just reshuffle them once. Uh, whenever a sort of scoring occurs, Gotti receives victory points equal to the current sort of tile multiplied by Gotti's position on the Serta track, multiplied by the GR value. Oh, shoot. Please hold. So I initially gave them six, which let's put them back six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So what are they doing? It's receives victory points equal to the curtain, current Serta tile, current Serta tile, so they're going to be getting two multiplied by Gotti's position on the Serta track. So two times three, so it's six. Are you kidding me? Multiplied by their GR value, which is two. So they're actually getting 12. What? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I'm getting killed, guys. What is happening here? I need to build more buildings. That's what I need to do. And I also need to get one of these things here y'all hi how are you today hello uh kiri kiri henry hello welcome to the stream thank you so much for joining i'm doing good i'm doing good just trying to figure out the first few rounds of this game and i feel like it'll start going quicker after this um okay so it is my turn so i'm going to get two out of here so we got a blue and a green all right. Trying to figure out. I need to get coins. I need to get coins because I really want to get one of these. So actually what I could do is I could go here. I could go here. This would allow me, I think technically this will allow me to, you know what, I'm going to go, I'm going to flip these two around because I would love the potential to use this blue one later if the AI doesn't use it before I do. Because um, technically I do think these three are around this one here, so I'm going to be able to build this building here um, with the pink here and the green here. So I think I'm going to gain my two coins first. So I can fit both of those. All right. So I did this action. I'm then going to do this one that's going to allow me one of these buildings. Um, I'm going to do this one here, actually. So this is going to cost me three coins. So I have those three coins now. Ooh. It's going to cost me three coins. It's going to get me 10 victory points. So I'm at 28. It's also going to get me up two on here. So one, two. And then the action here is that I can place one of these cobblestones onto here, which is great because that is the thing that we are going to be um, scoring for on this next round. And the nice thing about this tile, which let me show it to you guys here, is that it doesn't have to be connected to an existing one. Typically, when we use this board here, whoa, typically when we use this board here, 
you have to branch off of an existing one. So I would initially have to go to one of these four spaces, but because I'm using this, I can actually place it anywhere. So I think what I'm gonna do is I am actually gonna place it on this one here because this is going to allow me to build two roads. So I'm going to build two thin roads. I'm gonna place this one here, which like I said, because I'm continuing this line, this is gonna gain me three victory points plus a coin. Woohoo, look at me go. So that's gonna gain me three victory points. One, two, three. And then I'm gonna place this one here and that's gonna gain me four victory points. One, two, three, four. Whoop, whoop. And then because I did this here, I'm gonna gain one movement on the Serta track. Yay, woohoo! Oh no, I just noticed Jenna has a boo-boo. I do have a boo-boo. Sadness. It's because I burnt myself. I'm okay. I'm used to it. It's just the blister uh, from the, the burn started like ripping open and it was not, not comfy. Not comfy. Great way to relax after putting up a second Christmas tree. Oh, dang, Kevin. I want a second Christmas tree. Technically, I do have two Christmas trees. We have one here in the board game room. I don't know if you guys can see it behind me. Right there. But technically, I do have two Christmas trees. All right. So that is everything for my turn. But... I am going to build. So, unfortunately, the only thing that I can build is this corner one here. The corner buildings, they do get you victory points, but they don't get you any sort of like bonuses for them, which is sad. Um, but I am going to take this pink and this blue here. And I'm going to place the green here and the pink here. I feel like we keep on getting a lot of greens and I think that's going to be the thing that ends the game. Uh, so I'm gonna place this here. That's gonna allow me to take this and go here. And then that's actually going to put me up one more on the Serta track. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop, look at me go. <laughs> I need to get coins. Girl, me too, the fuck. <laughs> Nat, I love you so much. I can't wait to hang out next week, Nat. I'm so freaking pumped. Next week. It's technically this week, isn't it? Do you guys consider Sunday as the start of a week or is it the end of a week? Let me know. Is this the, the ending to last week or is it the beginning of next week? Whoop, whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, so um, I think I, I gained my two victory points. I don't know if I gave myself my two victory points, but if I did, whatever. It's two victory points. I'm still losing, so it's fine. <laughs> Let me know if I did actually give myself my two victory points already. I'm not sure if I did. Um, I don't think I did, but whatever. Okay, so we are now moving on to the AI. I did my two, my two actions. I did my building. All right, so the AI's turn. Whoop, whoop, counter, five. Ending of the week, and hello, just joined the stream a few minutes ago. Hello, James, welcome to the stream. How are you? Uh, ending of last week. Yeah, that's kind of what I do, but a lot of the stuff that I do on Sunday is preparing for the next week. So I feel like it's kind of like in the middle. It's like it is the rest from the week before, but it's also the prep for the week coming, if that makes sense. All right, so the AI has done a blue and a green, and they are going to be moving somewhere that's going to allow them to build. I really don't like them. I really don't like them at all. I think they're going to actually move to here because that's going to allow them to use the blue that I just placed. Screw you, man. 
Um, that's going to allow them to use the blue that I just placed to build here. Oh, guys, oh, because I was the first one to build in this row, I actually get to flip this over and I gain five victory points. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, we're beating them. I'm beating the AI. Oh my God. Look at me go. In Vietnamese, uh, Monday literally means, uh, literally translates to day two. Interesting fact right there. That is very cool. So Sunday is part of the next week. So it's the starting of the week now. Very cool. Nat, who gets the first hug at PAX? Technically myself, George, and Devin. Person who finds me first. Nat, you're going to PAX? Nice. Yeah. I have so many friends coming to PAX and I'm so excited. Okay. So... Actually, he could actually move up here, too, if he wanted. So I think we're going to look here. Uh, oh, we actually have to flip over their card first. So determined by this, they're either going to move here and then going clockwise. They're going to go here. Yeah. So they're going to place here. Like so. And then they're going to perform these actions here. So they're going to first build a big one. Actually, this is moving up there too. They're going to build a big street. And they are going to do this, prioritizing gaining them points. So they're actually going to go here because this is going to get them two coins, aka two times two, four victory points because they're GR is two. So one, two, three, four. We're not beating them anymore. <laughs> so that's going to be for that. And then they're going to move up once on the Sagrada track here. And then they are going to build. So they are obviously going to build the best that they can, which is going to be these two. And they're going to build here. So they're going to have to do this one. This is going to get them to go up on the Sagrada track. They're going to flip this over, place it here. They're going to place this here. These two are going to be placed here and here. So because now the lowest number is five, they're going to gain five victory points. One, two, three, four, five. And then additionally, because of the first one here, this is going to get flipped over and they're gaining another five. Ugh. One, two, three, four, five. The AI is, is pretty challenging, but I feel like it's just challenging enough where I feel like I'm not getting killed because like just then I, I caught up to them, but it's like still that toughness that like I'm still having to really try to keep up to them. We all have to meet up at some point. Everyone knows where George and I will be. Yes, I will 100% be joining or like coming to lucky duck booth to say hi to all of you while you're working um but also the meetup the meetup is on thursday right yeah ryan there's a meetup on thursday so i do have an event at 8 30 when is the meetup the camp co-op meetup let me know okay so Oh, he also does gain two victory points for placing this down. One, two. Because uh, whenever you place down the bigger roads, they're worth two victory points. Um, and then if you place down another one, it'd be four, six. Uh, so it's just double what the small roads are. Okay, so it is now my turn. The AI has done all that he needs to do. He's done enough. 3 p.m. to unknown time. Okay. Where is it? Does anyone know where the meetup is? Is that to be determined or no? All right, so I have these two. I think I'm gonna do pink. Hmm. 
Maybe I will do that. So my options here, I could, I could build onto one of these two spaces here. So what I think I wanna do is maybe, because there's one here. So maybe I go here. That would allow me to, ooh, actually, No, because I kind of want, I do want the cloth. Well, actually, if I go here, yeah, I think I might go here. Because if I go here, that's going to allow me to do this action here, which is going to allow me to put another cobblestone out. Um, I can't, dang it. I can't actually get what I wanted. I wanted to get another um, cloth because I want two cloth in order to upgrade. Actually, I could upgrade this one. And that's only one cloth. So maybe I'll do that. Yeah, I'll go here. That's going to allow me to put down another cobblestone. But this one does have to be connected to one of the existing ones. So, hmm. Do I want to build a big road? I could build a big road. I could go up twice on here. That would get me all the way up to four. That's pretty good. I could also gain a coin. I, I kind of want to put a big road out. I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to take a big road. And I'm actually going to place mine here. Because that's going to allow me to get two, four victory points. Because there's two connected here. So I'm going to gain one, two, three, four. For that. And then I'm also going to spend one cloth to upgrade this objective. Okay. And then, like I said, I am going to build here. So I'm going to take this green here. And then I'm gonna take this pink here. And then that's going to allow me to actually do this one. And this one is going to, ooh, nice. Okay, so this one's going to put me down one on the Serta track, which is fine. Um, it requires one pink and one of any color, which I've done. Um, but it's also going to put me up on the Sagrada. So whenever uh, you as a player... Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. I need to zoom out. Good lord. Um, so I don't know if you guys saw this, but I placed my things here in the center. Um, so that allowed me to do this action as well as this action. And now I'm taking two workers from these two spots in order to build here. And I'm building this building, which requires one pink and one of any color. It made me go down on this track. It made me go up on this track, which whenever you hop over one of these things, you get to take one of the tiles from that spot. So there are level one tiles, level two tiles, level three tiles, and level four tiles. Um, before I do that, though, I'm going to place here and here. So that's going to get me seven victory points for building that building. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And then I flip this over. This goes here. I get to place out this. And then I get to choose from these two here. So I can either do up one on the Serta track. Uh, and then two victory points, or I can get one coin and one cloth. Tempted. Tempted by the coin and the cloth. But I think I'm going to do this one, which is going to get me one step on the Serta track, and then two victory points. This one will be discarded. And then I flip that over. We're starting to build the, the Sagrada. Um, 
I arrive at 4 p.m. in Phila Philadelphia, so I will probably not miss it. Um, Borden Brew. Okay. Where is Borden Brew? I'm assuming it's decently close. I'll try to get there early, George, on Thursday to get the build done so you can uh, lead me to this thing. I will hopefully be there by 3 if my rental car is ready. Oh, hold up. Mimi, you're also coming to PAX? How did I not know you were coming to PAX? What the heck? Mimi, are you someone different in the Discord? Is your name different in the Discord? Let me know. I'm so excited! Yay! More friends. I'll send you the links later, Jenna. Okay, sounds good. Um, the only thing, George, um, is... Yes, girl! Oh my goodness! I'm so pumped! Um, the only thing is Francis, Aiden, and I are going or we're, we're driving up to Philadelphia and we're hoping to leave around 9 and it is like an 8 hour drive. So if we leave at 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but I'm assuming we're also going to like stop for food or something. So yeah, we might not be able to and then I also have an event at 8:30 that I have to be at. So I don't know. It depends on when we get there. Maybe I'll ask Aiden if we can try to leave earlier than 9. You are driving down to Philly? I am. I am Sam slash Mimi e-witched in the Discord. I have many internet personas. <laughs> so I'm assuming Sam is your actual name, um, which I do think I remember reading Hi Sam somewhere in the chat, and I'm assuming it, it was you. Um, oh, yes. Kim, you are Kimma in Discord. I know that. All right, so I think that is everything for my turn. I'm keeping up with the AI, which I'm very proud of. I will say that. We're doing pretty good. I'm doing okay. As long as I'm like actually playing the rules correctly, um, I think I'm doing good. Also, I'm pretty sure because I placed here in the middle, I also get to do the tram action. I forgot about that because of the whole like diagonal thing. Uh, I just, the tram action was definitely the thing that I kind of avoided in the first game because I like didn't fully understand. Um, it says this action allows you to do the following. Place slash move your tram around the city uh, section of the main board and optionally place a passenger which provide you with extra actions. Okay, so the first time you move your tram... Take it from your board and place it on any street space in the city with no tram, excuse me, and no passenger on it. It does not matter well, whether or not uh, a street tile has been built in that space. Um, every other time you take this action, you must move your tram from its cur current position. When you do so, move the tram one or two street spaces away. Uh, movements through your own street tiles are free, meaning you don't have to count... Uh, meaning they do not count against your movement limit of two spaces. You may move in any direction, turn onto any street, or move through another tram, but you are not allowed to end your movement on a street space with another tram, uh, backtrack, or stay in the same spot. Okay. Uh, when counting street spaces, do not count the spaces with your street tiles. This means that you can efficiently take longer moves as long as your street tiles are part of the chosen path. After moving or placing your tram, if there is no passenger on that street or tile, you may but are not required to place a passenger on the same street. Um, da, 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 da. Pay the cost and then you place them on the street. Finally, you may take the action associated with the street on which you place the passenger. Okay. So I can do it on my first time that I'm doing this. Okay. So I'm actually going to do my tram action because I do have one coin so I can drop off a passenger. And what extra action do I want to do? Oh, dang. So we're not like super close to getting to the end here, but I would eventually love to get up to the top here. Um, I'm doing pretty good with this cobblestone thing, so I could place on one of these spots in order to 
kind of save myself some movement on next turns. I have one coin that I'm going to use. Hmm. Do I maybe want to place another wide street? I could place another wide street. Because I could place it here and get two, four, six victory points if I did that. Um... That's a good option. Maybe I'll do that. There's too many options. There's too many things to do. Okay. I'll go here. And then I'm going to spend one coin to place out my passenger on this street. And that's going to allow me to take this action here, which is placing out a big street. And I'm going to place it right here. And that's going to get me two, four, six victory points. One, two, three, four, five, six. We are ahead of the AI. Oh my goodness. Hello, Vortac. Welcome to the stream. How are you? Road trip to PAX sounds like so much fun. I wish I could do that uh, too, but it would take me like three days. Yeah, not, that's not that's not fun. Uh, I'll leave late Wednesday night, so I'll be there by 9 to 10 a.m. Okay, maybe we could do that. Maybe we could just leave like super early so that we could get there earlier on Thursday. See, I don't know if Aiden would do that. Aiden and I are very similar in that we we are not morning people. <laughs> so both of us getting up and leaving at like 9 a.m. is still very early for us. Uh, Francis is fine. He's good with that. But yeah, my plane ticker was or my plane ticket was pricey though. Oh, I'm so sorry, Nat. Ooh, I'm happy Francis gets to go. Yeah, I'm very happy that Francis is joining. I was a little bit sad because we are celebrating my birthday on the Monday. Um, technically, we're also celebrating it on the, the Sunday night. Um, but Francis wasn't going to be there to celebrate my 30th birthday. So I'm very, very, very happy that Francis is joining so that I can celebrate my 30th with him. Sleep in the car. Francis will drive. Francis hates driving. <laughs> I think Aiden's driving, so if Aiden's down for it, like, I would love to leave earlier, um, to get there earlier. Um, if we did leave earlier as well, we would avoid, like, the, like, morning traffic and stuff, but I'm driving alone, so, uh, can't do that. Oh, Ryan. Okay, so I think that is everything for my turn, uh, finally, because I finally did my tram action. So it is now the AI's turn. We're going to flip over one of their cards. So their card is actually the cobblestone card, which is going to help them because of this here. Actually, no, never mind. It doesn't. They always just do this uh, times where they are here times their GR. So currently they, they aren't getting too many points. So that's good. All right. So we have blue and pink. They're going to move and then hopefully build somewhere. I think the only thing that they can do, the only place that they can go that they can build is moving to here, placing these here and then building a corner spot here. Because if they move up, they're not going to be able to build. If they move here, they wouldn't be able to overbuild, which I will mention, you can overbuild on a building. So uh, this one here, if someone was able to get three, they could actually overbuild with the stronger building. Um, so you can overbuild. Um, but I think they're going to move to here and place here because that's the only spot that they can go. So that's going to be that. They're going to move there. They are going to do this here, which they're going to place one of their cobblestones down. And they're going to prioritize these here. So the first thing that they're going to prioritize is the Sagrada. So I do believe that they can go here. 
So they're going to place there. They're going to move up on the Sagrada track, which is going to get them seven victory points. One, two, three, four, six, seven. Okay. That's their action there. And then they are going to build. So, like I said, they're going to build the corner spot here. They're going to take this green and this pink. They're going to build on this corner here. They're going to take another one like that. And then that's going to allow them to move up once here. Okay. This gets placed here and this gets placed here. All right. Yeah, this green is definitely making the, the game go pretty quick because we need one, two, three, four, five, six more greens in order for the game to end, which is pretty crazy. And then like both of the other tracks are all the way down here. Um, which actually they're gonna gain Oh, did I already give them their seven victory points? No, they got the seven victory points for that, which this needs to get flipped over. So they actually gain another seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because of them building. And I believe that's everything for their turn. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. It's gonna be my birthday in one week tomorrow. My birthday's on December 4th. I almost said December 24th. It's definitely not Christmas Eve. Um, it's December 4th, and I'm very, very excited. Um, this guy's here. What is this one? So I could actually overbuild there if I wanted to. Never mind, I can't because I don't have a pink. Do I have coins? I do not have coins. Um, how do I want to do this? Do I want to get another tile? Because I could go, if I went here, that would then allow me to build Yeah, that would allow me to build here and I could build this one because there is a pink. I would go up once on the Sagrada track and then I would go down once, which I don't love. I don't love that. But that would get me two coins and I could also get a objective tile. I would love to get some coins, I will say. And I do need a coin in order to place a victory or an objective tile down. Any Canadian stacks that you want, Nat? Uh, I snagged 18 chocolate bars, but wondering if you want anything in particular since I'm taking orders. <laughs> I love that. I do want to bring some Canadian snacks too, but I feel like there's so many Canadians bringing snacks already. Hi, Jenna. Greetings from Germany. Hello. Ralph, welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for joining. How are you? Hello all the way over there in Germany. Um, okay, so... I think, I think I've decided I'm good there. So I am going to take two coins... If I can reach them. Bring those coffee things again, Jenna. Ooh, I will definitely bring coffee crisp. So I'm going to gain two coins. Because of this action. And then I'm also going to gain an objective tile. Um, as of right now, I think the most that I'm going to be getting is for the big... Uh, big streets. 
There's also this one here that I would gain victory points based off of where I am on the track at the end of the game. So if I did that one, I would just have to make sure on the last round, because after this round is finished, we are going to go back down to here. Um, so in this round, I would have to really make sure to, to get back up there. Uh, but this one, I already know that I'm getting two four. So I think I'm going to grab this objective tile. I'm going to place it here. That's going to cost me one coin. So I'm going to throw that back in there. Okay. It's getting lots of uh, objective tiles, which is good. And then I am going to go here. I'm going to discard this and this. And I'm going to build. I'm going to have blue here, pink here. I'm going to build this one here, which is going to make me go down one on this track, which is fine. And then I'm going to go up one on the Sagrada track. I'm going to flip this over. We're going to place this here. I get to place out one of these, which because I did that, I actually go back up on this track. So that's good. And then I'm going to gain smallest number here. So I'm going to gain seven victory points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven to there and I think that is everything all right all right all right all right oh, I'll bring more Vietnamese coffee please do that was so good oh on the same day as my dad's birthday no way that's awesome fine hope you too yes I'm doing great um, and some Japanese snacks, please. Actually, we have an ethnic supermarket and whenever we go there, I always get high chews because I'm obsessed with high chews. So I'm like, I'm not going to say no to high chews, but you don't need to bring them because we can already get them here. So it's fine. But I grabbed six coffee crisps, seven Kit Kats, three Aero bars and two Smarties. Chips, um, I will grab some mint arrows as well. Ooh, yeah. Mint Aero bars are great. Is it the chocolate bar with the yellow wrapper? It is. Coffee Crisp is like a yellow wrapper and it has some red on it too. Anyone bringing fried pork rinds? Is that like an, a Canadian thing? <gasps> high chews are on the list. Hell yeah. I'm not going to say no to high chews. Those things are freaking bomb. Okay. So it is now the AI's turn. We're going to flip over one of their cards. Ooh, they're going to be putting down an intersection. Okay. Also, I need to put out... A new one of these. They have like a 100 flavors at our supermarket. No way. That's amazing. That's how I feel about quarter pounders with cheese. Oh, uh, now I want a burger. Best at Star Trek. What have you done? Okay, so the AI is going to try to move somewhere that they can build which I feel like there's not really many places that they can build right now, actually. Because they can't move here, because there's already spot here. If they move here, they're not going to be able to build here, because this one is only applied to this one. I don't know if they can move on a diagonal. Can they move on a diagonal? Maybe they can. Yeah, I think they might be able to move on a diagonal. Yeah, it says move to a new adjacent spot. And I'm pretty sure a diagonal is adjacent. Yeah, so I think they'll probably want to move to here then they'll be able to build one in the corner here so let's do that they're going to put the blue on top they're going to move on a diagonal to here like that um, and then they are going to do this action here which is that they get to place their intersection which i have not done yet so let me quickly check i'm assuming it's just wherever they are right now they place it Gotti tries to build on one of the street crossings adjacent to his meeple. Um, he never builds 
an intersection underneath his meeple. Okay. He always builds an intersection that rewards him with the most. Um, I don't think any of them are going to reward him. If you must choose between several equal options, use the arrow. So I think, I don't know, this one here already has a worker there. So I guess technically it's gonna be, it's gonna be this one uh, because you do arrow and then clockwise and this is the next clockwise. So he's gonna be placing his intersection there. Once Gaudi has built at least one, three, or five intersections, whenever citizens are placed on one of his intersections, he gains one, two, or three GR, respectively. So, safe to say I will not be placing anything on this spot. That's it. <laughs> Aww. Now I need to send Jenna and Francis some pork rinds, and maybe George, too. I will say Francis does not eat pork. Um, Francis is paleo pescatarian which is that he only eats chicken and fish uh, but i do eat pork i used to be paleo pescatarian but i i since have stopped i have a wicked recipe for coffee crisp cake oh dang now nah, pork rinds are a southern u.s thing southern u.s hello from barcelona it's almost 10 p.m here oh my goodness emilio that's amazing. We're playing your game. Do you live in this area? <laughs> I don't know technically what this area is, but I'm pretty sure it's just like supposed to mimic like the streets and stuff, which I think is beautiful. I love this box so much. It's gorgeous. All right. So... We've done the AI's action. They are now going to build, which like I said, they are going to build just a corner. So they're gonna take these two and they're going to build here. So they're gonna build a corner. They're not really gonna gain much for that. They will gain some victory points for building, but there's no additional things there. Um, we're gonna put green here and blue here. So that means they are actually going to get nine victory points for that one two three four five six seven eight nine they're at 80 i'm at 68 oh boy okay um so it is now my turn and i don't know what i want to do do ba -do, -ba -do, do 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 I want to maybe build some more streets? Because I'm going to gain victory points based off how many streets I build. I feel like judging by my objectives here, I'm really focusing on streets. So maybe if I go here, that's going to allow me to not only do these two actions, which is placing out streets, both wide and narrow, but it will also get me the tram action which will then allow me to move a few spaces. I could move, I could move like one, two to here and I could put out another big road or I could move, oh wait, hold up. Will I have enough to do this? In order to put a passenger out, I have to have one cloth which I do not have. So, shoot. I could though gain a cloth by placing a road here. This road here would gain me a cloth. Could do that, could do that. Beck Racing banned for mentioning the spooky spooters. <laughs> oh, that's so funny.
Yeah, isn't that really cool? That's very cool. <laughs> Hoping this game has spiders like the other one. <laughs> uh, banned again. I usually watch these solo plays of Jenna. Aw, thank you so much, Emilio. Now I want to make dessert. Mm, same. Okay, so... I think I can do it. So I think what I'm going to do, I guess we should probably take these out. I will say, though, that I'm not going to be able to build for a little bit. What I'm thinking I'm going to do, I'm trying to get to the possibility of building one of these. These are the best buildings you can build. They are going to get me two on the Sagrada track. They're going to get me seven victory points, and then they're also going to make me go down twice on here. So that is why I don't want to do it yet, but I would love to work up to getting one of these. But my thing is, is that I continuously um, place my workers around where the AI's meeple is. So they keep on taking the workers that I'm trying to place. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to kind of place mine over here because this is kind of an open spot here. And I can try to like work up to having those three workers so that I can potentially soon build one of these buildings. Because I feel like I need to get away from their meeple. Because the AI, or Gotti, can only move once per turn. So, yes, he might try to start moving down here, but it's going to take him a while. So I'll be able to actually, like, use these eventually. Um, okay. So... If I place... So I'm definitely going to place here. So I'm going to place like this. I place that here. That's going to allow me to place a big road as well as a small road. Um, I ooh, so I'm going to place my big road first, and I'm going to place it here. That's actually going to get me two, four, six, eight victory points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whoop whoop. That's going to get me one step up here. Boom. That's good. And then I'm additionally going to do my two small roads. I'm going to place one here. That's going to get me a cloth, which I definitely need. And that's going to get me one victory point. And then I'm going to place a, another road here. And that's going to get me two victory points. One, two. So those were my two actions here. And then I'm going to use my trolley and where do I want to move and drop off a passenger that's the question because I can only move up to twice so I could move one two to here and I could drop off a passenger on my road. Do I gain victory points if, if I drop off a passenger on a road of mine? I kind of forget about that. Let me check. Moving. Haha, <laughs> yes. Uh, if you placed a passenger on a street tile, the player that that street tile belongs to, yourself included, immediately scores victory points as if that street tile had just been placed. At the end of the game, you score victory points equal to your rightmost uncovered passenger space. Okay, cool. So that means that if I place the passenger here, would that mean that I gained eight victory points? Because it's as if this was just placed, and that would be two, four, six, eight. I think that's what that means. I think so. I think that's what it means. I could be wrong where, like, because this isn't my road, but I'm pretty sure it's any road. When I was watching, uh, what's his name, Gaming Rules, he did a video on playing this solo and kind of taught as he played. Um, he mentioned that it's just any connected road, not necessarily just your road. 
Um, I could be wrong though. Uh, but I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go one, two to here. I'm going to spend the cloth that I just got and I'm going to drop off this passenger here on my road, which means I do gain, I believe, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight victory points. And then I can do this action here, which is taking one of my cobblestones and placing on one of these spaces, which I think I'm just going to place here. That's going to gain me one. Ooh, or maybe I place it there. I don't know. I'll place it here. That's going to gain me one spot on the Serta track, which is going to get me to the top of the Serta track, which is great. Oh, everyone's talking about baking in the <laughs> in the chat now. This is not good. <laughs> I want cake now. All right. So I believe that's everything for me because I can't build as of yet, but I'm okay with that because we are going to build on a future turn. I'm just kind of prepping things for it. Um, okay. My thing is, is that how am I supposed to get three out without like wasting that space, you know? Does that make sense? I'll just have to, no, because then I'll just, yeah, I'll just have to like overbuild or whatever, which is fine. Okay. So it's now the AI's turn. Oh, stop talking about snacks. Peak British dessert. What is what is this really good thing? Sticky toffee pudding. Ooh. Okay, so the AI has taken or taken has taken out a pink and a green. So the pink is gonna go on top. And I do believe I do have to reshuffle. So that's what they are going to be doing. We're going to place these here so that they can build, which I believe there's no possible, actually, yes, there is. So they are 100% going to go to here onto their intersection. And they're going to place their workers there. Um, because they have that one intersection, they do gain, I believe, one GR for that. I believe that's what I, yes. Once Scotty has built at least one, three, or five intersections, whenever citizens are placed on one of his intersections, which they just were, he gains one, two, or three GR respectively. So he's going to gain one GR, which is two victory points. And then he's going to perform this here, which he goes up one on his Sagrada track. He's going to upgrade his next leftmost. Okay, and then he's going to be able to build. So he's going to be able to build this one here, which I believe just now he is going to trigger the end of this round. He is going to do another corner here. And then he's going to add this pink here, and he's going to trigger the end of this round because of this green. And he is going to gain nine victory points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Great. And then he puts one of his tiles here. That's going to get him one up on this track. Okay. And that is that. Yes. Okay. So. It is now the end of the round. That's the end of their, their turn, and we are going to score. So we're going to score for this tile here, which is two victory points per um, tile that has been placed. One of his tiles has been placed and three of mine. So I have three times two, which is six. 
times I'm at the four, so I'm getting six times four, so I get 24 victory points. Heck to the yes. So I'm at 87 plus 20 is 107 plus one, two, three, four, five, nope, four. Where was I? 87, one, two, three, four. 24 victory points. Okay. And then they're going to get two victory points times two. So two times two is four times their GR, which is two. So they're going to get eight victory points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This tile has saved me. This tile has saved my butt. So that's going to go there. That gave me a lot of victory points, which is good. These are going to get discarded. They are going to get reshuffled, though, because I believe there are less than four here. So I'm going to put these out. I will reshuffle the ones that have been discarded. And then we are both getting put back down to the starting spot of the Serta track again. And we're moving into the last round which depending on what tiles come out is either going to be a very long round or a very short round because we are all the way back here for the blue and the pink. So we have still quite a bit for the blue and the pink, but then we only need four more green tiles in order for the game to end. So we'll see how that goes. New one comes out. All right. And... I believe that is everything for that. We went back down. We redid that. I think I'm good to start my next turn. And like I said, I'm going to try to kind of build up over here. Uh, the board game garden. So yeah, that what I make is basically a bag of Ritz crackers crushed in a can of Eagle brand condensed milk and a uh, Heath bar? What's a Heath bar? I've never heard of a Heath bar before. Is that a... Look at Jenna doing the math. Heck to the yes. Um... <laughs> yeah, what's a Heath bar? Is it like a chocolate bar? Easiest treat ever. I have this thing that I, I make called Christmas Crack. I'm sure that you guys have seen it before or heard of it before. Uh, but it's basically soda crackers with like a caramel sauce on top that hardens. And then you put ch uh, chocolate on top as well. It is so yummy. I freaking love Christmas crack. All right. So here we have interesting. Okay. So I think I'm going to do... I'm going to do blue at the bottom. And I will do, so it's either I go here, 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 or here. What do I want to do? I still have quite a few more roads left, so I could do that. So I could either go here and do roads and an intersection, or I could go here and do roads and a cobblestone. I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to place this here. Like that. That's going to allow me to do a cobblestone as well as roads. Um, I'll do the roads first. So I'm going to take two thin roads. I'm going to go here. That's going to gain me three victory points. One, two, three. And I'm going to go here. That's going to gain me a coin as well as four victory points. One, two, three, four. I'll get my second coin. All right. And then, so those are my two streets. I'm going to do my cobblestone. What do I want to get from this cobblestone? Do I want to get another... No. If I get another objective tile, I'm going to have to either pay one coin and one cloth or one coin and two cloths. I could go up on the Serta track. That might be nice. I'll do that. 
I'm going to go up on the Surda track twice. So one, two. I do want to also mention that for this round, we are going to be scoring for buildings, which I currently only have one building. Um, but I'm going to try to get a few more buildings this round. We will see. Hello, Jorg. Welcome to the stream. So this now... So is this now the food garden? Absolutely. Heath Bar is apparently score bar, Jenna. Oh my god. I love score bars. They kill your teeth, but they are fantastic. Do you guys have crunchies? Does anyone have crunchy bars where they are? Or are crunchy bars also Canadian? Because crunchy bars, they have like this like sponge toffee in the middle. Ooh. If you guys don't have crunchies, I'm going to bring crunchies. Because they are fantastic. Let me know. Okay, so... What was I going to do? Oh yeah, I already did that. Did I go up on the track? I did. Okay, so I've done these two. It is now time for me to build. So I am going to go one and two. Two pinks, which I'm going to do this one here, which is, is going to make me go down one on the Serta track, which is fine. But I'm going to place out one and two pinks. That's going to get me the lowest number, which is nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine victory points. And I'm also going to be able to go up on the Sagrada track. Whoop, whoop. This is going to flip over. It's going to be placed right here. And then I'm now going to... Now playing right here by Chase Atlantic on Spotify. You can always ask... No, thank you. <laughs> what the heck just happened? Get out of here, Surrey. Okay. Um, what was I doing? I need to get one of my little tokens, place this on here, and then I get to pick my level two. Ooh, okay. So I either go up on the Serta track once, and I gain four victory points, or I go up, I get five victory points, and I get either a cloth or a coin. I think I'm going to do the five victory points. And then the cloth slash coin. I'm going to grab a cloth. I think that's what I'm going to do. Go up five victory points. One, two, three, four, five. I don't know if I'm like maybe just doing really well now. But I feel like I might be cheating. I feel like I'm doing too well. But I guess because I'm playing like the easiest mode. <laughs> Siri wants to play a game. Yeah. That was kind of scary. Oh my god, Starbucks in the US uh, are so bad. The UK version is so much better. I was shocked when I got them here. Oh, uh, yeah. Whoop, whoop. Counter, six. Oh, I think it's more than that. <laughs> crunchies are so good, but not usually uh, in the US. I will definitely bring some crunchies then, because those are freaking fantastic. I think they're probably one of my favorite chocolate bars. Um, okay. So, I think that is everything for me. I did not go on to a diagonal spot, so I don't do my trolley. I'm going to sneeze. Please hold. Maybe not. <coughs> yep. <coughs> Bless me. All right, so it's now the AI's turn. Let's see what they do now. Oh, yeah. Crunchies are good, but they get stuck in your teeth. I do agree. I do agree. It's probably why I have horrible teeth. Oh, here we go. So the AI is most likely going to do a pretty big turn this time because they're going to be able to get another building. Okay, so they are now going to move to a spot where they can build, which I actually don't know if they can build anything. Because this one here... is the light green unless they got a pink what they they didn't get a pink they got a blue and a green they are not going to be able to overbuild to this one so i think 
they're not gonna be able to do that. So they are then going to go, what was the next priority for building for them? God bless you, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, next priority is the street crossing does not have an intersection tile. So they can pretty much move to any of the spots, um, but they are going to start this way. So they're actually gonna move back to here. They're going to place these two here. Sadly, they're not gonna be able to build, but they're gonna place those two there. They're going to do their action, which is they're going to take this one here. They're gonna to get to go two up on the Serta track, one, two. They're gonna gain 10 victory points. So they're at 109. And I think that's everything for that. And like I said, they can't really build anything right now. Um, so I think that might be everything for them. Do they gain anything additionally for the buildings? I need to double check. Um, oh yes, we still do have to flip over another card because they don't do the action that's on the house tile or the public service tile. They do whatever action is here. So they're going to take whatever one is here. So they're gonna take the second one here. That's gonna be placed in their second scoring spot there to the right. And then we'll refill. Boom. I have a world market near me so I can get a lot of UK chocolates and candies. Oh, that's so fun. My favorites are crunch bars. You guys have those in the US. Crunch bars, we have them in Canada. They're like the blue package and they have like the Rice Krispies in them. Yeah, those are really good. I think those are actually uh, Francis' dad's favorite chocolate bar as well. Um, okay, so it is back to me. I'm going to take out my two. Boom, boom. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Ooh, okay. Ooh, this is cool. All right, so what I'm going to do is I am going to overbuild here because I already have two here. So I could place here or here and I'll be able to overbuild on this spot. Um, because this one is the pink tile, I would be able to do the blue tile. So do I either want to do both both of them? I'm going to get the plus two on the Serta track, which is kind of going to be pointless because I, I minus two from the tile. So I'm just going to stay where I am. But I either do a cobblestone, which could allow me to do a few different things, or I can put out another big road. I think I'm going to do a cobblestone. So I'm going to place here. Yeah. And then, so I'm going to do these two things first. So I'm going to gain two on the Serta track. That's not me. One, two. I'm going to gain two on the Serta track. And then I'm going to place out another cobblestone. And I think I'm going to go here so that I can go up once on the Sagrada track. Boom. So those are my two actions. So then I get to build, which is one, two, and three. So that's going to allow me to put one, two, and three. Okay. So that is going to get me 12 victory points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay. And that's going to allow me to build this one here which is going to get me another seven victory points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I go down two on the Serta track, sadly, but I do go up twice on the Sagrada track. This is going to get overbuilt onto this building. 
Come on. So then I do place another one of my tiles or little circles on here. That's going to gain me one on the sort of track. So I'm back up. We're good. Uh, and then what else happens? I have to do my Sagrada track because I've passed over. So my two options here is I can go up twice on the Serta track and gain four victory points, or I can get a mixture of cloth and coins, two of those. That might be nice. And I gain six victory points. I think I'm going to do that one. I'm going to gain six victory points. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to gain... Uh, cloth or coins, I think I'm going to gain a coin and a cloth. Like so, and then I'll place that here. Discard this. All right, so that's everything for my turn. It is now the AI's turn. Now I want some Tim Tams. I've never tried Tim Tams before. I think, uh, what is her name? The heck was that? Oh, okay. Um, Stella from the Meeple University. I think she always brings Tim Tams, uh, to Gen Con and stuff, but I don't think I ended up getting any from her. We like briefly met a few times at Gen Con and she's wonderful. We rarely get them in Canada and when they're in the store, they sell immediately. Oh, dang. Ours is pretty good. We usually have some at our grocery store called uh, Zeller. No, not Zeller's. <laughs> Throwback to Zeller's. Zare's, I meant. <laughs> All right. So they pulled out a blue and a green. They're going to move somewhere that's going to allow them to build. Which, again, I don't think they can build anything. I think what they're going to do is they're going to move. Actually, no, because I, I can't like plan ahead for them. Because <laughs> really what they could do is they could go here. They could place workers here so that on their next turn they could go here and then overbuild on this spot. Um, but I do think that if they can't do anything here... They're only going to be able to move down to here or here. So that means... Oh, we still need to flip over their card. So we're going to go point this direction and then go clockwise from there. So they're going to be placing on this spot here. And moving their meeple here. Okay. And then they are going to be placing out a big road... And they're also going to be moving on the Sagrada track. So they're going to go over this. They're going to get 10 victory points for this. They're going to be at 19, 119. And then they're also going to build a big road. I think the closest spot to them is here, possibly. Put out a big road for them. So yeah, going over and then going clockwise, they're going to place here. That's going to gain them two victory points. One, two. Tim Tam slams are the best. What the heck are Tim Tam slams? Tim Tams are dope. Uh, if you eat more than two at once, <laughs> you'll die, though. Now, Tim Tams, I can get here in the New New England. I can bring those. Ooh, the Karma ones are great. My friends from Australia send them to me at Christmas every year. Oh, I love that. That's so nice. Okay, so I do believe that's everything for their turn. Because I don't think they can build anything yet. Because a lot of what they have here is surrounding that and they can't really build anything on there so that is everything for their turn we're gonna go back to me let's see what i have here got 
two. All right. And, hmm. So I could place, I could place here, here, or here. I kind of want to do another one of these buildings. So maybe it's either I build more roads or I get two on here. I think I'll go down here. I'll go to this spot. So I'm going to be able to do this, which I'm going to go up on the Serta track. And then I'm also going to do a building, which requires three coins, which I have. I'm going to spend my three coins. Actually, some of them are costing two now as well. But I do think... Ooh, I could do that. So this one here would allow me to place, if you guys can see that, it would allow me to place one of the objectives onto these with a cloth discount. But I can't do that because I don't have the coins for it. So never mind, I can't do that one. So let me do this one. I'll do this one over here for three coins. This one is going to allow me to either build two narrow roads or one big road. As you guys can see. It's also going to allow me to go up two more times. One, two on the Serta track. It's going to get me 10 victory points. So I'm going to go to 67. Which, by the way, I'm at 167. So I should have... They have these little tiles that once you get past 100, 200 so on and so forth. You can take that. Um, and then that's going to allow me to build two narrow or one big street. I think I'm going to build my last two narrow streets. I might as well. But where do I want to place them? That's the thing. Should I do them up here? Because I do have this here. Yeah, I think I'm going to go here. This is going to get me a cloth. And here's not going to get me anything, but... It's still going to get me two victory points. Or I could go here and get three victory points. But then I will never be able to, like, connect those. Oh no, Penny! Do you want me to take that paper off your blanket? <laughs> I, I think I put some like papers in Penny's blanket basket. And she always like jumps into the blanket basket, but she's landed on top of the papers. <laughs> One second. Penny, you want me to take the papers out of your blanket basket? Here you go, baby girl. Here you go. Out of your blanket basket. Not you, Mr. Walt. That's Penny's blanket basket. All right. Hi, sweet girl. Hi. Hi, you two. Hi. The babies are very excited to see me. They're very cute. Okay. We had a little bit of a chair stream there for a second. <laughs> so, what did I just do? What did I just do? I placed these. So I placed this one here. That's going to gain me one victory point. Plus I get a cloth. I have a lot of cloth. Okay. And then I place this one here. Because it's attached, I gain one, two victory points. I think that's everything. For that, at least. Um, and that then takes me to building which I can build here. So I'm going to discard a pink and a blue. 
place these here and here. Wow, pink and blue has now caught up to the green, almost. Um, and then I'm going to build this one here, which I needed a pink in any other color. And then that's going to put me down one on the Serta track, but one up on the Sagrada track. I'm gonna flip this over, place it here, put one of my little tokens on here that's gonna put me back up one on the no, Serta track. Um, and then that's gonna gain me 12 victory points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Boom. Okay. And I believe that's everything. I am doing very well. I feel like I probably should have done like the normal, but it's fine. <laughs> okay. So that is everything for me. Did I do everything? No. I need my last decision for my Sagrada track. Uh, this one is I go up three on the Serta track, which I cannot go up anymore. But once you have reached the top, every time that you would go up on it, you'd gain two victory points. So if I did this, I would gain six victory points plus another six victory points. So I'd gain 12 victory points for this. Or I can gain coins and cloth times five. I feel like that's kind of helpful and I feel like I'm already kind of killing the AI. So I'm going to do this one. I'm going to gain one more cloth and four coins. Might as well. All right. And then this one gets discarded. So then... I think that is everything. And I do think... On this next round, I do think the AI can build here. Because it's not necessarily the, the like workers that you place that you can build with. You can build with any other places. So... Because these two are here, I'm pretty sure he can overbuild onto this one. So they'll probably do that on their next turn. Uh, unless they move and they're able to do something else somewhere. But we will see what happens. So it's the AI's turn. Aw, 10,000 bits for a Penny and Walt sighting. Do you want to see one of them? I'll see if I can pick up one of them. Hey, 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 hey! Penny, you guys aren't in trouble. Walt is not in trouble. You don't need to attack him whenever I move. Uh, do either of you want to come say hi to everybody? Come here. Do you want to come up? Come here, Penny. Penny, don't attack your brother. Come here. One of you two, come here. Do you want to come up? No? Come here. Penny or Walt, come here. Come here. Come here. Good boy. Oh my god, this boy is heavy. Okay, I got one of them. We got the boy. There we go. We got the boy. Hi. How are you? Are you good? Yeah, it's good. I love you. He's so cute. You want you want to come up too, Penny? You want to come up? Come here. Come here. I I want to pick you up. I want to have both of you up here with me. Come here. Can I pick you up? Baby girl, I can't pick you up from that position. Come here. Wee! We have both of them. Hi, babies. Everyone says hi, Walt. Here's the boy. Aww. You guys love each other? I think you do. I think you love each other. This makes me so happy. You you want down? You don't want up here, Penny? You want down? Okay. Goodbye, Penny. 
I'll keep Walt up here. <laughs> oh, he's just chilling. He's just chilling. Sir Walter Francis Chang the third, Lord Ruler of the Toy Box, third of his name, breaker of squeaky toys. Exactly. That is your full name, sir. That is your full name. He loves snuggling. This makes me so happy. Penny's not a snuggler, but Walter is. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna put you down, okay? I'm gonna put you down, all right? I love you. Mama's gotta get back to the game, okay? Bye-bye. Whee! Watch out, Penny! The big boy's coming down. All right, so... The AI has taken out a pink and a blue. We're gonna put the blue on top. We're gonna flip over one of their cards. Her royal mistress, Penny Rose Beasley, heir to the dog bed throne. Heck to the yes, go Penny. All right, so. We're gonna place these where they could build something. So I'm pretty sure no, because he always wants the blue on top. Because if we go here, if he places the blue here, it's he's not going to be able to overbuild on this because he needs a pink. So then again, it's just whatever is priority. So he's actually going to put it here because he's going down. So he's actually going to place here. And again, he can't quite yet overbuild to this. So I think that's what he does. But then I believe he's also going to use this here and overbuild here. So regardless, he's still going to be able to build somewhere. And I think on his next turn, he'll probably move here. And then he'll be able to overbuild on top of this one as well. So, all right. So he is going to do the trolley action. So he is going to take his next little cube. And he is going to place it somewhere. I forget what this one is. It's been a while since we did it. Jenna, mother of tiny fluffy dragons. I love that. I love that so much. My babies are dragons. Those aren't dragons. They are Ewoks. Mother of tiny fluffy Ewoks. Yes, a boy. He's a boy. Walt. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks, Nat. <laughs> good lord. Oh, good lord. All right. So Gotti has placed uh, places his next passenger from the board on the street space adjacent to his meeple with no other passengers prioritizing his own streets. Can he place on his own streets? He cannot. Uh, he If he has more than one... Yep, 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 yep. If there is no available streets adjacent to his meeple, there is, so. I think he avoids ours. So we are just going to do it by this again. So he is going to put his meeple or his passenger here. And then. Okay, so I think he's good. He just places it there. And then to determine what he does, I believe we flip over another one of these. So we're gonna flip it over. And he's gonna do cobblestone. He's gonna place a cobblestone and his priority is Sagrada, then getting a tile. So we're gonna place it there. He is then going to take this one here and he's going to place it here. Why are you barking, Penny? All right, I think that is it for that. Whenever he places one, that's it. Okay. And then, like I said, he can't build anywhere here but he can do this one here. So he is going to discard both of these. He is going to overbuild with this guy here. 
He is going to go up on the Sagrada track once. He's not going to go down on this Surdy track. Sari, I forget what it's called. <laughs> this is going to get overbuilt here. He's going to take... It's currently raining and four degrees. Expect cloudy skies starting tonight. Today's high will be five. Hey, Sari, stop. It's because this track, I keep on saying Sirdy. She, she thinks that I'm saying Siri. Oh, Siri, stop. Stop. Stop it, woman. Stop listening to me. Okay, so then this will go here. Good lord. And this will be placed here. This will be placed here. And then the AI is going to gain 12 victory points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12. There. All right. And I believe that is everything for their turn. So it is back to me. They are catching up. I will say that. And they also did take away the tiles that I was using down here, but it's okay. I could actually overbuild here before they do. Could do that. So I did do two greens. Oh, shoot. That means that this is going to probably cost the game to end pretty soon. Because I'm probably going to put another green there. Um, I do have lots of coins. So I could do this again. And then this will allow me to upgrade. Yeah, 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 I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go here. This is my best option. And it's actually a pretty good option too. Um, so I get to do this and this. So I'm going to upgrade one of these first, which I think I'm going to upgrade this one. This is going to upgrade my objective here, which is connected narrow roads. I do have to pay two cloth, but I have it. So I'm going to put those there to upgrade that and then so that's for the upgrade action and then I get to get a building which actually these one gets flipped over here I actually think I'm going to do that one I'm going to do this one here which is going to cost me three coins three coins uh, it's going to get me 10 victory points. So I'm going to 82, 92. I'm going to go up twice on the Surdy track. I was checking if she heard me. Um, so that's going to be 2 times 2. So I'm going to get 4 victory points. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I can get a tile. So I'm actually going to grab this one here, which is going to be... Uh, I get victory points based off of where I am on the Sardi track at the end of the game. And because I'm at the top, I feel like that'll be pretty good. So I'm going to take this one. I am going to place it here. So that's going to cost me one coin and one cloth. And I'm going to place that there. Boom. All right. And that one gets added to my buildings which is pretty good because that's what we're going to be scoring here siri just wants to be included yeah poor siri uh would you like to play a game set i'm assuming would you like to play a game said in my oh oh yes it is would you like to play a game said in my best retro computer mechanical voice Siri, would you like to play a game? Siri? What? Stop. Which app would you like me to open? Siri, stop listening to me, you creepy woman. Please stop. All right. So I think that's everything for my two actions. I got my upgrade. I got my building. It is now time for me to build, which I can actually build with blue blue and green so blue 
blue, and green. I am going to build or overbuild. Um, so this is going to put me up twice on the Sagrada track, which I don't need. It's going to put me down twice on the Siri track, which is not great. Um, but I also get an additional seven victory points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Plus I do gain 13 from this. So one, two, three, plus 10, 16. So I'm at 216 now. I will say I think the last time I played this, I scored 305 maybe. So I think at this point, I just want to beat my last score. I think that'll be good. Um, so then this is going to go here. We're going to over build on this. And I think that's actually my last time that I get to build, sad sadly. Because I don't have any more things here. Shoot. Maybe I should have paid attention to that. Because the AI is then going to be able to build, like, quite a few times. Yeah. But I do get my one on the Surdy track back. I think that's everything for me. All right. Flip over the next AI card. Okay. I'm going to take out... Two. Ooh, they just got real lucky. Okay, so they are going to be placing on somewhere that's going to allow them... Yeah, so they have to move down here. So they're going to place here. They're going to move their meeple down here. They are going to do this action here, which they're going to take a, another one of their intersections. And I think the only... Actually, no, they can place down here too. So they prioritize if they're going to gain something. I think Penny and Walt are playing upstairs. So apologies if you can hear barks. Um, so they're going to either place here or here. And depending on that, so they're going to go top corner, clockwise. They're going to place here. Like so. And I believe that's everything. And then they're going to build. So they're going to do one, two, and three. They are going to overbuild. So they're going to place pink here, blue here, and green here. So actually, this is going to end very soon because it's just a matter of one of the blue or the green getting used. So we're pretty close to the end of the game now. Um, okay, so that means that they are going to gain 16 victory points for that. Oopsie. They were here. One, two, three, four, five, six, plus 10. They're at 150. So, like, they're pretty far away, but they probably could eventually get up there. Um, okay. I think that's all that they get for that. But they do... They're doing this. Actually, no, that's going to get them... Oh, that's going to get them lots of victory points. Shoot. So, they are doing this one. They don't go down on the sturdy track. So they do go up twice on here. On the Sagrada track. That's going to get them... 18 victory points for that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 58, 68. They're also gaining another 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Was that 7? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yes. All right. And then this one is going to get overbuilt on here. Boom. They're going to get... Oh, oh, wait, what? I guess, what if we run out of our tiles? Are we going to be able to build anymore? I need to look this up because I don't think this has happened before. Neither of us can build anymore and the game still has yet to end. Interesting. Maybe we have to like take off. A tile? I'm not sure. Anyways, they do get to go up on the Surdy track once. This is weird. I have revamped Walton Penny's titles, but they are too long to post on YouTube chat, so... 
for your bl viewing pleasure, look on Discord. Oh my goodness. I'll do that at the end of the stream, George. Uh, yes, let me quickly check here about placing on buildings because overbuilding Yeah, obviously that. When placing your building marker, place it on top of the markers already present, preserving the order. know what Walt is barking at. I can't really see anything anywhere that says like if you run out of the tiles. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Uh, if you have no building markers left, you must still construct a building. When you construct a building without a marker on your board, simply do not mark it, but receive victory points and all other effects as usual. Okay, so one of us can either build. Uh, so I believe that was the end of their turn. They placed that, they built that building, they got all their victory points. So I might be able to finish off the game here. Gotta run for dinner. Um, thank you, everyone. Have a good evening, Kevin. Have a good rest of your night slash day. Enjoy your dinner. I'm probably going to be finishing up this very soon. Um, so let me see what tiles I get or what workers I get. Boom. Boom. Yeah, so I might be able to finish this off now. Um, yes, I will. Perfect. So my option here is I can either place here or here. Or actually I could place here as well. Ooh, that's probably what I'll do. Because if I place here, oh no, I don't have any coins, but I can get coins first. Yes. Okay, cool. Ooh, this is fun. This is gonna be a good turn, I can tell already. Okay, so I'm placing here. That means I'm going to gain coins. I'm gonna gain two coins. One, two. And then I get to do this here, which is get another building. What would be my best option here? They all cost two coins and I have two coins. Um. I could put out more streets if I wanted. I could put down another tile. Is there anything that's going to allow me to upgrade? Yes. So if I put out another... Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to take this one. This building is going to... Shoot, actually, I don't think I can have more than one of a similar building. Let me quickly check if I can have more than one of the same building. Um, spend two, three, two, or one coins to build available public... You can only choose, you can only choose a public service you have not built yet. Take the top tile. Okay, so I can actually not take that one. That's a bummer. So I cannot take the, 
I can't take these three. So the only one I can take is this one here, which I'd be able to put out one of my uh, thingy-mabobs, my intersections. Or I could move up twice on the Sagrada track, which I've already done. Yay for George telling me the stream was still going and I didn't miss the entire thing. Woohoo, James! Welcome! Also, hi, Jenna and everyone. How are you, James? Yeah, you're actually, like, just in time to see me win the game. I'm very, very happy right now. So I think I'm going to do this one, which this is going to cost me two coins. This is not the best one that I... I would have wanted, but it's fine because you can't have more than one of each of the buildings. Um, so this is going to get me six victory points. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to allow me to go up twice on the Serta track, which I'm going to go up once and then gain two victory points for the second one. And I'm going to be able to place one of my, one of my intersections. Should I try to place it where, like, he possibly will want to move? <laughs> I don't think he'd want to. Um, let's, let's just place here, shall we? I don't think it's going to make any difference. I'm just going to place it in the middle. Uh, it typically would cost me a coin to place there, but this one allows me to do it for free, this building. And that is it for that building, my two actions. Um, and then... Because I'm on an angle here, I do get to do the trolley action. And can I go one, two? I could, and then I could upgrade. Yeah, let's do that. Cost me one, okay. It's gonna move my oh shoot no i can't do it no i need a coin dang it that's unfortunate i didn't plan this out correctly is there any way for me to get one coin i don't think there is so i'll be able to move but i won't be able to actually drop off a, a passenger because it cost me one cloth and one coin to do so. Hold up. Do I gain that coin here when I place down my intersection? Or is it just when someone goes onto my intersection? Please hold. I might be able to do something. Intersection. Building an intersection. Um... Oh, heck yes. After placing an in intersection and paying all the printed costs, which technically I would, but the building gave it to me for free, um, gain all of the printed adjacent benefits on the main board that are still visible, not covered with a street tile. What? Hold up. I believe I'm correct with that. Gain all of the printed adjacent benefits on the main board that are still visible. Wait, 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 wait. So actually, I did not know this. I don't think we played it like this. Okay, so technically, if I maybe decide instead of going here i go here i gain all benefits from the adjacent streets so i'm actually going to get two coins <gasps> this is great whoop whoop okay so actually i think i might be able to do this hold on hold on hold your horses everyone so i placed my intersection I now do trolley action. I have two coins and a cloth. I've actually realized that if I go to here and I try to do the upgrade action, I'm not going to have enough cloth to do so. 
So sadly, I'm not gonna be able to do that one, but let's see if there's any other thing that I could do to get me points. I could go to, I don't think I can get there. One. I can, because these are my streets, amazing. So I'm gonna go one, and then these are free to here. I'm going to spend, for my next passenger, I spend one cloth and one coin. And I'm gonna drop off my passenger on to this here. I believe that gains me eight victory points. I'm not 100% sure about that. <laughs> Yay for getting to watch Jenna win. Can we get a, a preemptive whoop 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 whoop? Because basically what they say when dropping off passengers is gain victory points as if you just placed this tile. No, that doesn't get me eight victory points. It gets me four victory points, sorry. Because if I just placed this tile, I would have gotten one, two, three, four for the, the line here. So I gained four victory points. Let me, let me do that. One, two, three, four victory points. And then I can place out... Oh, shoot. I can't. <laughs> I don't have any roads left. Shoot. Dang it. What have I done? Honestly, I don't think there is much that I can do here. Dang it. <laughs> Maybe I just do that and accept that I got that those four victory points. Dang. I really thought I had something there until I realized that I don't have any roads. It's fine, it's fine. Okay, so anyways, let's do... Shoot. Oh no, that's not good. That's okay though. So I have to do this. So I'm gonna overbuild here, which I just realized. I'm taking those two off to overbuild here. And it's this one, which sadly is gonna make me go down one on this Serta track, but that's fine. That's gonna go here. I don't have a um, building tile, so we're just going to leave it like that. But I do gain different things. So I went down on the Serta track, can't go up on the Sagrada track, but I do have to place this here and this here. Hold up. Oh no, I gained 20 victory points. Woo! 28, 48, all right. So that immediately ends the game there. The AI does not get another turn. Heck yes. <laughs> whoop whoop counter like 17 or something. <laughs> There's never enough Jenna whoops. Also, I just spent far too much time looking into the difference between whoop whoop, uh, whoop and whoop outcome. They're basically the same, but WHOOP is the more formal version. WH is more formal than just WO. Whoop, whoop. Okay, so we are going to be doing this guy right here, which is that we are going to score for this. So, sadly, I do get two victory points per, so I get eight times three. I almost had eight times four. Dang it. So I have eight times three, which is 24. So 48, 68 plus four, one, two, three, four. I think I might be able to beat my score. We will see. Uh, but I think I might be getting a decent amount from my, my objectives here, as well as I am gonna have some different scoring things for stuff on here being taken off the board. So I'm currently at 272, and I think the score I need to beat is 305, I think. Uh, my friend Kat recorded it, so whatever I get today, I'll ask her what I got the last time we played, and I'll see if I actually got better. Um, okay, so then the AI is going to get 2 times 2, which is 4, times their GR, which is 2, they're going to gain eight. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So obviously if the uh, AI's GR was higher, so if it was four, for example, um, if you do an easy, their GR is two. If you do it on normal, it's three and uh, hard is four. So obviously the multipliers would be more for them and that would get them more victory points, but I am just doing it on easy. And I feel like the next time I do this, I will probably go to normal um, and then even hard on the next one. Um, okay, so that is everything for this. We are then going to score for different things, which I don't know what the AI is going to score for. So let me check what they're scoring for. Okay, so final uh, game end and final scoring. If you cause the end of the game, uh, oh wait, hold up. Gotti plays one last turn. On this last turn, he prioritizes constructing a building, uh, selecting a different street crossing for his meeple's movement if necessary. If the street crossing selected by the arrow makes it possible for Gotti to construct a building, you keep searching using the arrow on the Gotti deck as usual. Okay. So he is prioritizing building on this round. And I believe... I don't think he can build anywhere. Because, like, the only way to overbuild here is if he gets three here, which he's not going to be able to do. Can't overbuild here. Can't overbuild here because he's going to need three. He is not going to be able to build anywhere. Well, thank God for that. Even though I kind of feel bad that I'm like killing him so much, you know? Okay. So yes, he is still going to do this. So we're going to flip over this. We are going to shuffle up the cards. Okay. So he is going to move in place, which I do believe he's going to want to move here, um, which also we need some of these. He's going to have his two builders. He's going to move to this spot here because when someone or himself uh, goes on to one of his intersections, he is going to gain uh, victory points based off of how many intersections he has, I believe. Let me quickly check that again. Here. Um... You know what? When I placed this one, I think this one was exposed. So I technically think he should have gotten a cloth, which whenever he gains cloth, he gains his GR. So technically, I think he should be up two more. Um... Once Gotti has built at least one, three, or five intersections, whenever citizens are placed, he gains one, two, or three GR. So sadly, he only has two, so he doesn't have quite three, but he does gain one GR, so he gets another one, two, for him moving on to his intersection. Um, sadly, this he that's like literally the only spot that he can move because he can't build anywhere else, like I said. Um, corner spots cannot be overbuilt, so I think he's just going to move there. He's not going to be able to build. He is going to do these two things. So he's going to place out two of his tracks. That's going to gain him one on the Surdy track. And he's going to place these out. And I believe, I believe he's going to go here. 
That's going to gain him three victory points plus one, so four. One, two, three, four. And then he's going to place here as well. And that's going to gain him two victory points. One, two. Okay. And then he's also going to upgrade to this one here. And then I believe that's everything because, like I said, he can't build again. So that is now the end of the game. I believe I have already gotten this. Does anyone remember if I already scored myself this? I believe I did. Because I did 4 times 2 is 8 times 3. I already gave myself 24 points for that. He has not gotten his yet, so he is going to gain... Or did I do his already? I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> I'm confused now. Um, I think I'll just give it to him. So he's going to get 2 times 2. Yes, I don't think I gave it to him because I realized... Or maybe I did give it to him, but he's just going to get another 2 times 2. Because it's 2 times 2 times 2. So I gave him 8 already, but it's actually times 3, so I gave him another 1, 2, 3, 4. So technically got 12 instead of 8. There we go. This gets flipped over. And then he is going to gain victory points based off of some of this stuff. So he's going to gain, I believe that's 5 victory points plus 2 victory points. So he's going to gain 7 victory points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven victory points. Let me double check the end game scoring here. During final scoring, Gotti scores victory points for the number of cobblestone tiles he has uh, removed. So two, which I gave him that. And also on his player board, and for the number of passengers he has placed. Yes, so then that's the five that I have here. So we got seven victory points there. And I believe that is everything for that. Gotti ignores, however, the scoring conditions on the modernism tiles. Um, tiles instead, for each modernism tile on his board, he receives victory points equal to the tile multiplied by the position of the marker next to it multiplied by the GR value of the difficulty level you chose. Okay, so we are going to do two times two. Two times two is four, times two is his GR, so he's gonna gain eight victory points. So he's at 12, right? So he's at four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then for this one here, it is three victory points, times two is six, times two, he gets another 12. So he's at 24. And then for this one here, it is two times three, again, times two. So he's gonna get another 12. So he's at 236. And then, do, 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 if you end the game with more victory points than the Gotti, you win. If you tie or have fewer victory points, then Gotti wins. Okay, so let me quickly do all of mine. Clearly, I have already won because um, he got to 236. So let me get... Gotti is at 236, and I'm currently at 272. So right now, I'm just trying to beat my score that I got last time. Um, so I'm going to gain... For my cobblestones, I'm going to gain 11 victory points, so I'm at 83. I am also going to gain 10 victory points for my passengers, so I'm at 93. And we still have all of my different objectives to do. So, we got this one here, which is one victory point per uh, narrow street that I have, times two. So, they're each going to be worth two, I guess. So I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 20 victory points. Heck to the yes, I beat my score. 93, 13, 
Okay. We've made it to 300. Yo, we've made it to 300. I think I've already beat my score. Um, I gained two victory points per large street that I have. So I have two, four, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. This one here is I get two victory points per connected, which I believe connected has to be uh, orthogonally. So I think the most you can get on this one is eight because I have this here, I have here. So I have two, four, six, eight times three. Eight times three is 24. So I get another 24. One, two, three, four, and then 20. So I'm at 43. Okay. And then this one here, I gain two victory points per this. So it's two times three. So six times two, I get 12. One, two, 55. Okay. And I believe that is everything. So I ended up getting to 355. Oh, is it Gaudi? <laughs> I've been calling him Gaudi this whole time. <laughs> Gaudi. Apos apologies for that. Gaudi. Oh, I'm so sorry. I hate when I mispronounce things. And I do know that this, I believe, is like a historical game somewhat. Uh, so apologies if my mispronunciation uh, offended anybody, but Gaudi. Whoop whoop, nice. Sky, hello. Welcome to the stream. How are you? Thank you so much for joining. So I got a finishing score of 355. Uh, Gaudi had gotten 236. So I did lap him, which is pretty good. Um... And I feel like I did pretty good. Like I said, uh, I do believe my last score was 305 possibly or 309 or something like that. I made it back from the supermarket. Welcome back. Who's winning? Well, I just finished off the game, Nat. I have a finishing score of 355. And Gaudi, I think that's how you pronounce it. Gaudi has... 236. So I won. Woohoo! Go me! This is the first time that I actually felt like really confident in a gameplay that I've played recently. Um, like I said, I did win the game of Barcelona, uh, like the multiplayer game that we played. Um, I feel like I did even better with this one. I could possibly, because this is my first play, I could possibly be playing some of the AI things wrong, but um, if you are watching this on youtube after the fact of the stream please let me know if i got any rules wrong i'm always open to hearing if i've gotten rules wrong because i do want to obviously play the game correctly um so let me know uh you don't need to be mean about it it's just a board game but yeah let me know if i got any rules wrong uh or if i should be you know not as confident in my gameplay because i played the ai completely wrong but we'll see <laughs> Um, doing well, just caught the very end of the game, but glad I tuned in. I have my eye on this game. Sky, if you enjoy games where you have a lot of, like, different actions and, like, chaining actions, action chaining, I feel like is not, like, technically, a, a, like, a board game mechanism, but I think if I made up a mechanism, chaining in a game, just, like, being able to chain actions is one of my favorite mechanisms, and if you enjoy that as well... Uh, I definitely recommend Barcelona because it's very satisfying to be able to have those turns where you're able to chain the different actions. Um, it's very, very good. So, yes. Anyways, um, thank you all so much for joining me today. Thanks for hanging out and playing some Barcelona. Some Barcelona. No offense, just wanted to make sure you knew since he was a real person, an artist that designed a lot of Barcelona um, and most famously designed the Sagrada Familia. So yes, I did know that. Um, I know that he designed that. Um, basically, there's like the two different people in the game. There's like the more, I don't know what it was. We were talking about it when we played this multiplayer, but it's like uh, the one person wanted to make it very like building focused and then the other person uh, wanted there to be like the nature and stuff in Barcelona. And I think that's like the whole 
uh, like history of it, I guess. But yeah, I don't so I don't fully know it. But uh, that's good to know. That's good to know. Thank you so much for letting me know ex exactly how to pronounce it. I appreciate that. Yay, Jenna! Thank you so much, Mimi, aka Sam. <laughs> Very famous architect. Gorgeous and unique buildings. Uh, good game, Jenna. Thank you, James. I appreciate it. Going on my list so I can uh, arc nerd out while playing. <laughs> whoop whoop in the chat. Whoop whoop. Everyone whoop whoop in the chat. I'm going to be mean about it. <laughs> you be nice, not Like combos? Freaking love combos. You did a rule wrong and now I'm going to spend time, energy, and effort out of my day for some reason to be mad about it. <laughs> Grr. <laughs> You, you tell me, you tell me, Nat. <laughs> what do you think about the solo mode? I loved it. Absolutely loved it. There's some times in games um, where I feel like the whole, like, trying to figure out what the AI is going to do is a little frustrating. And I, I did feel a little bit of that in this game where, like, trying to figure out where they will go based off of what would be best for them. Um, the whole, like, trying to figure out where they would go to build a building or where they'll like place things. That kind of rule set in solo modes, I don't love. So that's one thing. But I feel like in most of these Euro games, that's just something you have to do in order to make it feel like you're playing against another player. It's just something that you're gonna have to do. They're not like solo designers. They're not gonna be able to make it feel like you're playing against another player if what the other player is doing is very random. So. There's that rule set where they, it just has to be there in order to make it competitive and make it so the AI is getting points, uh, like, well and, like, being competitive. So, yeah. It's something that I don't love because it, like, just takes more time out of the game. Um, and, like, it takes time out of you trying to figure out what you're doing on your turn in order to figure out what the AI is going to do. But, again, I feel like it's something that you have to do in most of these Euro games, so I'm okay with it. And I still really enjoyed playing. I don't know how long I've been playing. Three hours. So we haven't made it past the four hours yet. Um, so that's good. But yeah, thank you all so much for hanging out with me. Um, Jenna, you're making chaining a thing if it isn't and I'm here for it. Heck to the yes. Love that for me. Also, anyone curious about uh, Gaudi should look up Park, Park Guell. It's so cool. I need to look that up. I'm assuming that's like a building that he he constructed or designed. Uh, I was just in Barcelona, so it it's top of my mind for me. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks for the stream. Thank you so much for joining, Ryan. I appreciate it. And his house is around Barcelona. They're so cool. Ooh, okay. I need to look up Gaudi. Gaudi. Happy birthday. Um, have a great time at PAX. Kim, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate that. Um, I What is today? Today's Sunday. I don't think I'm going to have a stream on Tuesday, sadly. I have a lot of stuff to do before we leave on Thursday morning. So sadly, I'm not going to have a stream on the Tuesday of next week. And I'm not going to have a stream on the Sunday of next weekend because obviously we're going to be at PAX. So I guess, yeah, I guess this is the last time that you guys are going to see me unless you watch YouTube videos that are going to go up next week. But this is the last time that you're going to see me live before uh, PAX. So uh, also before my birthday. So thank you so much. Um, I am very excited for PAX. Any of you that are going, please uh, don't be shy. Come and say hi. I love saying hi to people and uh, like meeting you guys. I, I love that. Uh, a lot of you in chat I've already met in person. And I'm very excited to see you again at PAX. So super, super pumped. It's a park. Ooh, okay. I'm going to have to look that up too. Oh, I'm assuming, yeah. Park Guell, obviously. It's a park, Jenna. <laughs> I didn't quite think that through. Um, thanks. I noticed your channel uh, too late. Stayed at Niagara last fall. Nice. That should be... Um, not so far from you. Yes. I was actually just in Niagara Falls uh, two days ago. I will see you live at PAX. George, I'm so excited to see you. Have a good rest of your weekend, friends, and have a good early uh, next week. Have a good next week, I guess, in general. Have a good next weekend. And I will see you guys once I get home from PAX and we can catch up and I can talk all about what happened at PAX and I'll probably 
maybe do a video on like my haul of games that I get from PAX and uh, obviously there's going to be uh, vlogs of PAX. I will be vlogging the whole time that I'm there. So keep an eye on those. Um, I will either be putting my PAX vlogs up here on the board game garden or I will put them up on my uh, main YouTube channel, which is Jenna Rose. If you guys have not gone and subscribed to my main channel, it's Jenna Rose. I haven't been uploading there for a while, but I really do want to start uploading there. Um, it's basically just a lifestyle channel, so I'm just going to be vlogging my day-to-day -day life. Um, I obviously vlog the board game stuff. I vlog just my day-to-day -day chores, and I recently vlogged me decorating our house for Christmas, so that's going to be going up soon. Um, Obviously, I'm going to vlog packs and then put it up there, maybe. Um, and, like, cooking. I love cooking, so I do a lot of vlogging of, like, me cooking. Uh, just, you know, living my life. We're going to go to a Christmas market tomorrow. Oh, yeah, we're going to the Christmas market tomorrow. Um, so, yeah. Definitely go and check out Jenna Rose. It's my main channel. Um, and then, obviously, the board game garden. But, yeah, thank you all so much again. I appreciate you all. Yay for haul videos. Yeah, haul videos are the best. All right, friends, uh, have a good rest of your Sunday and I will see you guys, uh, not next week, but the week after. Love you all. Goodbye. Pax Hall's drag race. <laughs> Bye friends. <laughs>